Derby County have become habitual offenders. On too many occasions this season, their defending has been criminal. If they keep on doing it, they'll be going down for a stretch. But so far, Jim Smith's side have come up with a few get-out-of-jail-free cards. We are with the Comeback Kings, where Derby County are this season, there are goals. Our live Super Sunday football from the Carling Premiership comes from Pride Park. It's Derby County against Charlton Athletic. Charlton, of course, back in the Premier League and they opened with a big win, but they haven't won since. Derby County are still looking for their first win of the season. They will both probably fancy their chances here. Craig Burley is our guest. We'll speak in a moment, but first of all, let's get the team sorted out. Claire Tomlinson has the details. Well, the Omens are great, aren't they, for lots of goals this afternoon. Between these two, they've scored 17, but conceded 19. Team news, well, there's good and bad for Derby County. Branko Strupa misses out. He's facing a hernia operation, and he'll be going to Germany for that next week. But Malcolm Christie will take his place. He, of course, has recovered from viral meningitis and scored two against Middlesbrough in midweek. Georgia king Kladzi, he'll have to start from the bench again. Jim Smith saying in his programme notes he's not quite 100% fit yet. For Charlton, Carl Tyler is back after serving a one-match suspension against Southampton midweek. Jonathan Johansson starts up front after scoring that equaliser against Southampton. Chris Powell, he lines up against his former club. And Richard Rufus will make his 250th appearance for the Addicts today. Well, there's plenty of history between these two clubs. Derby and Charlton met in the first cup final after the war back in 1946. Three members of the cup final squads from that year are here at Pride Park today. That's how they looked then. This is how they're looking now. Les Fell will be 80 in December, lined up for Charlton. Angus Morrison, he's 77, was in the squad for Derby, as was Reg Harrison. The winner that day, well, Derby County. They ran out 4-1 winners. Let's hope there's as much goal action in today's match, Richard. Thank you, Claire. Uh, Craig Burley is our guest here this afternoon. Craig, welcome to you. Do you know what we're going to get here today? Does anybody supporting Derby County know what they're going to get from their team this season? Uh, hopefully a clean sheet today, but uh, <laughs> on previous games uh, I wouldn't think so. But, you know, we, we've changed our system at the back this season. We've decided to go with a four. The manager wanted to do it last season, but he didn't feel he had the players. He brought quite a few centre-halves in this summer, but at the moment it's not working, but we're sticking with that today. Is there any reason why, or have you just been unlucky so far? No, I don't think it's been unlucky. I mean, we've brought in a lot of new players, especially centre I think three or four different centre halves. And the big Norwegian boy Bragstad's been playing uh, Higginbottom from Man United left back. So it's a pretty new unit, but uh, we have to shore up the defence sooner or later. We can't go on giving two and three goals away and coming back. As you did, of course, uh, in midweek, Middlesbrough were here and got themselves three goals in front. But watching this, as we were in the studio on the night, nobody gave up on Derby County, which says a lot about the spirit, I suppose, doesn't it? Yeah, we actually started away the game, first 20 minutes very well. It's the final, you know, bit of a rash tackle, but... Uh, Penalty? Well, it's tough. I think the referee's always going to give that. Yeah. Uh, but as I say, we started away pretty well, no doubt here, Boxers was going to score. 1-0 down after playing the first 20 minutes when the better side. Which is irritating, isn't it? Well, it is, because especially when you come off a season as we had last season, when we were struggling, you know, here, big Pumis come out, they had a great season last season, they just, you know, as the balls come off them, and that, that's your luck at the moment, it's in the net. 2 0 down, chasing the game, and you get caught in the sucker punch again, and uh, really, you know, we're all over the place pushing forward, and, you know, 3 0 down, sort of 20, 25 minutes to Honestly, go. We had Steve Bruce and Alan Smith with us the other night, and, and, and both felt there was something in it for Derby. As I said, that says a lot about, I suppose, your spirit, but also the ability to keep turning games round. Yeah, well, I've got to say, I didn't fancy to come back from 3 0, but. Uh, we brought on Christian and Kladzi and both uh, you know, turned the game round. Talking point. Down goes Stamp. Paul Ince knocks the ball out. Yeah, I mean. Stamp we... gets up. Derby County keep the ball. Why? Ince kicks it out there. I think we felt Stamp wasn't injured and uh, Dean Sturridge throws it down. Button cross it in and uh, the resulting corner, you know, we get a goal from it. I mean, had it happened against us, I think we'd have been a bit aggrieved with that. But uh, in saying that, we felt they were time wasting and, you know, we felt. That was the right thing to do at the time. 
But in general, let's not condemn Dean Sturridge, it, it happened again yesterday. In general, do you stand by the um, belief that either there is um, an unwritten rule or there isn't? And if there is, that everybody should stand by it? Well, you can't ever be, ask everybody to stand by it because it's out with, out with the referee's hands and that was spoke about this morning. I was listening to the soccer extra this morning and, uh, you know, they were saying, where, where does the referee draw the line? And sportsmanlike behaviour, bring it back? Well, you know, you're getting players, so many players diving and faking injuries these days. You know, players could kick, especially when you're two or three nil down, and I think it's, it's difficult. It's down to the individual players and the teams where they want to throw the ball back. I'm sure at some point this season somebody will try it against us because of that, and we'll have to be on our guard. <laughs> uh, Charlton, as I said, opened with a big win on the opening day. Uh, they haven't won since. Now, uh, would they be right in thinking, well, I'll tell you what, we might just fancy our chances at Clyde Park against Derby? Well, especially after last season where we didn't perform very well. But I think Charlton. I've certainly got a better chance of staying up than when they come up uh, a season or two ago. Alan Curbis has done a great job, he's more experienced now. He's brought in one or two more players. So and you I think they're stronger and better this time around? I do so, and I think they're willing to spend a few more quid, you know. This uh, was midweek, but all Steve Brown booked twice in circumstances that he felt aggrieved about, and off he went. They're down to ten against Southampton, but again, showed a lot of spirit, didn't they? Yeah, I mean, they'll be looking to win, you know, obviously at home, they'll be looking to make that a bit of a fortress, and. Uh, Southampton struggled last year and they'd have been hoping to take something, but, you know, they win the game 1-0, Pahar's at the back post, and, uh, but they've won a game, they know what it's like, I mean, they, they turned Man City over, you know, well in the first game, and uh, they've been a wee bit unfortunate, Johansson here, signed from Rangers, he's not been fit, but he, he possibly could play today, and, you know, he could be a big threat for us, so I think they've got pace, they've got quality, and they're well capable of beating us here, so we, we really have to be on our guard to get a good result mm. today. Bottom end of the Carling Premiership, let's have a look. They all say a table doesn't matter at this time of the year, but it does, actually, doesn't it? When well, it's got a familiar sight to last season, but if we win today, I think we got up to 11th or 12th, going in the goal difference, I don't really know, but uh, it'll be a big win for us today if we can get it. West Ham, Southampton, Derby, bottom three at the minute, Sunderland down there still, Ipswich beaten yesterday, then it's Charlton, Bradford, Villa, Middlesbrough and Manchester City. West Ham, of course, play tomorrow night on the Monday Night Football, they go to White Hart Lane and we'll be there as well. Two goals for Malcolm Christie the other night, his first game of the season. It would appear that he is, um, if not recovered, but well on his way to recovery from that viral meningitis. Yeah, what shape is he in? He's in good shape because he's a fit young lad and they did ever so well last season, you know, coming in, very inexperienced. Not the most confident player off the pitch, but very confident on it. And uh, as you said, a nasty, nasty illness there. And he was very ill for, for three or four weeks and he's did very well to come back. I think the manager feels he's not quite ready. He wasn't on Wednesday to start the game, but came on. He's always in the right place at the right time. You see there, last, last season against Sunderland, he's a sort of player who he's always in the round, he's got great pace, and he's a young lad with confidence. What do you mean he's not confident off, but he is on the pitch? What's well, the difference? What changes? He's a quiet lad off the, the field, I don't know, but I think if anybody remembers back to Bradford last year, he was doing little flicks and, you know, all, all sorts of things, but, you know, you wouldn't even see an experienced player doing, and, uh, He's got a lot of confidence in his own ability and I think if he keeps his head down he'll go a long way. The sub the other night, as you said, there's one thing Jim Smith is not afraid to do, isn't it? Change things around if his teams aren't winning. Well, no, he'll change it around, especially when you're 3-0 down. You know, you've not got much choice. <laughs> and, uh, but he brought in Kinkladzi as well on Wednesday night, who a lot of people shout him from, to play from the start, but uh, he's in the same sort of shape as Christie. He's had a, an operation, he's not quite ready, and uh, he's on the bench today again. Let's hear from Jim Smith. Here he is with Claire Tomlinson. Jim, I noticed in your programme notes uh, you've likened the team to Houdini FC, but it can't go on anymore, can it? I hope not. Uh, clever words, Jim. I don't think I wrote them. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's been incredible, uh, but it's something that we don't want to make a habit of. I mean, if we go behind, we want to come back. But we want to, you know, we've got to stop giving silly goals away and, uh, and keep playing the football and get in front. Looking for the first win of the season, is today that day? Well, I, no, I can't, you can never tell with us, that's our problem, we're not really inconsistent, I mean, we played extremely well uh, first half against Middlesbrough, we were 1-0 down, and then we struggled for 20 minutes, then we went for them uh, very adventurously and got the, the draw, but I mean, it, it, we scored nine goals, and, and uh, if you get nine goals in four games in the Premier League, you should be able to get enough goals today to win the game. But ten goals conceded. Correct, I didn't want to mention that fight, Claire, but uh, that's, that's all you the story, I mean, uh, We've also got, I mean, in, in, to be fair to the lads, we've been playing young boys, guys making the uh, debuts, you know, because we've got people like Carbonari, uh, Burley and Powell, the lap was out till this week, um, Bohinan, you know, senior players out of the side that, uh, and super today now, that we, we require in to win games. 
And Branko Strooper, of course, has scored in all your games so far, so how much will you miss him today, do you think? Well, Christy came back and he got two on uh, Wednesday and hopefully he'll take his place. But, I mean, he's always looked like scoring a goal, does Branko, uh, so we will miss him. But it's up to Dean Sturridge and uh, Dion Burton and Malcolm to do the job. OK, Jim, thanks very much. Thank you, Claire. Not telling me the manager doesn't write his programme notes, surely. No. Rory Delap, Craig, does he fall into with the haircut too? Yeah, uh, does well, he fall into the category of senior man with so many missing? Yeah, I mean, I think he does. I mean, he's came from Carlisle, really, and uh, last couple of years he's come on leaps and bounds. And uh, the good season last season, I think, still try to find out what, what his best position is. You know, he's played right back, right midfield, mm. and he's even played up front. But I think today we'll see him playing a little bit further forward, possibly on the right side of the midfield. He's got a great engine. Uh, he's, he's a constant member of the Republic Island squad, not quite a regular member of the team yet. And as I say, I think last year was a, a big year for him, experience-wise, along with a lot of other players at the club. Was the haircut his idea, or was that inspired from within the dressing room? I think that was inspired within the dressing room. There was quite a few lads. I actually had a little spell myself last season, but uh, according to the wife, it wasn't looking great, so <laughs> I've tried to go back to the long hair, but... Quite a few lads going for that, and I read a uh, report at the beginning of the season referees were going against people with, with crew cuts, so maybe that's what they? Is that right? Well, I was trying to say we were showing a bit of aggression, you know, and and, and uh, so we've, we've got quite a lot of players with, with crew cuts, so... Well, maybe there is something in it, we'll have to ask the referees. Andy Hunt and Charlton back in the Premiership. Goals galore for him last season, 24 in the league, only 7 in 34 in his previous Premier League campaign. 3 in 4 now. What's that telling us? Is he better, as well as his team? Well, the first time up for him, obviously, would have been a learning experience and uh, dropping down back to the first division, scoring a lot of goals, having a great season for Charlton, and then obviously Charlton coming up. People will ask the question, can he do it now in, in the Premier League? And uh, look back at his previous record, but he started well. You know, he's, he leads the line well for them. Uh, he's got a nice left foot, so I don't see any reason why not. Hopefully not today, of course, but he, he can score goals for them. His attitude is, well, Kevin Phillips did it, so why shouldn't I? Is he right? Well, I think they'll find that the chances are few and far between compared to the first division, but uh, if they get on a run like he's on, you know, if he scored three and four, then it's a confidence thing. When the ball drops to him, you'll feel as if he's going to score. Let's hear from the manager, Alan Kirbishley. Again, he's speaking with Claire Thomas. Alan, a great start to the season at home against Manchester City, followed by two away defeats. How important is it to, to start winning away from home now? I think it's important that we can win anywhere. You know, um, yeah, we did have a great start, and I think that... Uh, the last couple of results have been affected, you know, I went off about it on Wednesday, but it has been affected by some refereeing decisions. I just hope we can get back uh, to the way we have been playing, because we have been playing OK, and pick some points up today. Derby are the comeback kings this season. Do you think if you do go ahead, that'll be in the back of your mind? Well, I was thinking on the way here that perhaps, uh, you know, I'd like to keep 11 men on the pitch, and I think Jimmy would like to score first. And uh, let's have a game after that, because uh, I can't really... Um, assess how well we've played. We have played well, uh, but you know, for, for an hour up at Everton and uh, for half hour on Wednesday we had ten men. So I'm hoping uh, that we can keep everyone on the pitch and if we can play like we have been, then I think we've got a chance of picking something up today. Derby uh, can score goals and uh, obviously show that they can let them in, so it should be an interesting knock knock. <laughs> That's certainly true and the omens are there will be plenty of goals in it today. Well it could be, but uh, you know, you never know how the game is going to pan out, but, but certainly we have got to get ourselves in a position that, that, that we've got a chance of winning something here today. And I think Derby um, have got to give themselves a chance of winning. So who knows how it's going to pan out. All I do know is, is that uh, we're playing with a bit of confidence and I like to think that we can carry that on today. And if we can, we've got a chance of taking something. This time round, do you think the boys have adjusted better to being back in the top flight I think, earlier? I think the club has. We're a lot stronger than we were perhaps uh, two years ago as a club. And uh, I've got a decent sized squad. And, uh, you know, I've got a bit of competition there, so hopefully we can. And, uh, you know, the early signs is that the, they're enjoying it, and uh, we've not been overawed in any of the games we've played. Uh, we just haven't got the points. And Jim Smith, of course, is a manager that you know quite well. Yeah, I was with Jimmy for three and a half years up at Birmingham. Enjoyed my time immensely. And uh, he takes the game seriously, Jimmy. I mean, a lot of people perhaps get a, a different impression of him because he's uh, larger than life, but he takes it really seriously, and uh, he'll be desperately trying to beat us today. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. We've seen him all fired up this season as well, Jim Smith, haven't we? Does it still mean as much to him as it always has done, or more now? Yeah, I've no doubt it does. Preaching to us at the start of the season about control and that, and then <laughs> see him up at Newcastle, you know, out the referee. He lost the plot entirely well, there, didn't he? I think he's frustrated. We wanted to get off to a good start. Obviously, no, we got a bad start last year and really never recovered and just, just made it up, so... 
Well, it's Pride Park this afternoon on the Super Sunday. Charlton, the visitors, Derby County, our hosts, of course. Um, the stadium here won numerous awards for disabled facilities down the years, which gave us the opportunity today to road test them with Alan Milner, Charlton fan, and his family. So, Alan, from the moment you arrive at Pride Park, how good are the facilities for the disabled? Well, I'd have to say that they're excellent. I mean, the, the fact that we can come and park close to the ground, it's good parking facilities, all the stewards know what they're doing and talking about, and the whole experience makes it so much easier for the disabled football fan. Unfortunately, that's not the case with many football grounds across the country. I've just got to grab my ticket over here. Alan, presumably this is just a standard disabled toilet? Well, it's more than that, Jeff, in the sense that, that there's a symbols here, which is a key to information for disabled people. And so, and the other thing is, it's a radar protected system as well. What does that mean? Well, really, it, it stops the trashing of disabled loos, and it allows us exclusive use of them at the same time. And it would mean that they meet certain requirements in terms of size uh, and adaptions to them lose as well. So and do most dis disabled fans have one of those keys? Yeah, they can get these from radar. They have a five pound charge for these. And this key scheme works nationally, which is even better. If you excuse me, I'll have a quick go. <laughs> Alan, now that we're actually inside Pride Park, what's different about it? Well, I like the fact, Jeff, here, that I can come with my family and friends in, in you know, with my own supporters, in effect. Um, it's not very often the case that that happens. We go with the away crowd. And it's very intimidating. I've got Nicola here, my daughter, who's only 13. There's Janet, my wife. And so there's issues about that, which we particularly like. So just how far have facilities for the disabled come, Alan, do you think? Well, as we've seen today, Jeff, I mean, they're light years from what they were ten years ago. Uh, and perhaps Derby leads the way in many respects. Look at this uh, wonderful view. And I'm really looking forward to the game today and hopefully a child will win. But it's not universally the case. Uh, I'm chairman of the National Association of Disabled Supporters. And we're working with football and supporting football to bring all football clubs up to the same sort of level of service that, that Derby have got. And one of the things that we're currently doing at Charlton, which is going to make such a great difference, is the fact that we're going to get a brand new executive style coach. Uh, it's going to be fully adapted to wheelchair access, disabled loo, clamps for wheelchairs and things like that. And we think that we're going to be the, the leaders within the football world in doing something like this. And this is brilliant stuff. So for you, Charlton get it right off the pitch as well as on it? Absolutely. And let's hope they get it right on the pitch today as well. It's a good man, Alan Milner, does a lot of good work for the disabled. And let's hope he enjoys his day out here today. Jeff Shreves asking the questions, of course. You weren't here, Craig, I know, when they left the baseball ground, but do you think there's anybody that used to watch Derby there that's still concerned about the move? Because this stadium here is terrific, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I suppose you'll always get your die-hard supporters that never wanted to move in the first place, but uh, it's a fantastic stadium, like most stadiums now in the Premier League. And to be fair, we get almost 30,000 every week at the moment. And uh, I don't know why, after the way we've performed the last 12 months, but you know, they've been loyal to us. And, uh, Great facilities, and as I, as I say, most clubs in the Premier League are now going this way. And you know, like St Middlesbrough, a big stadium, Sunderland, and it's a joy to go. go it was a time, of course, when you were playing in front of 60,000 at, uh, at, at Celtic, but you're obviously enjoying yourself here now. Well, I am, as long as we can, you know, have a decent season and not, not be in a sort of relegation dogfight we were in last season. And uh, I think we will improve on it. Obviously, we need to tighten up a bit at the back, but uh, going forward, we're creating a lot more chances, and I think. You know, if we get everybody fit, we can't afford to have four or five first-team players out. We haven't got a big enough squad. Then we can be well in the, in the top of the table. I'm not saying we're pushing for Europe, but we can finish in the top half. Has it changed a lot since you left and went to Scotland? It's a different one. It's, there's a lot more foreign players, I've got to say. Uh, probably a little bit more quality, but uh, the pace of the game is still the same. And uh, there wasn't really too many surprises for me when I came down here. Obviously, as I say, getting used to the pace again, it's a little bit slower in Scotland because most teams defend against it, your old firm teams were down here at the NTN. But I'm enjoying it and hopefully we can have a good season. What's the message from the manager today? What's he want from Derby out here? A clean sheet to start, you know, and uh, keep going the way we're going. We've got a lot of pace up front today, Sturridge, Burton and uh, Malcolm Christie. So a lot, a lot of pace. If we can keep a clean sheet, I think we can, we can score goals. I hope I'm not putting the kiss of death on the boys. <laughs> <laughs> it's Derby County against Charlton here on Sky Sports 1. And if you're a Sky Digital viewer, well, this is what you can get on Sky Sports Extra. 
mate. The gunners have upped the tempo a bit there, mate. It's it! Was it a cross? Was it a shot? Was it a cross come shot? Yes! Oh. Get in there! I'm absolutely gutted. That is as good a goal as I've seen him score. Goal! Fantastic! Come on, Arsene, do your little victory jig jump. Come on, then! Oh my days! Oh, I'm lost for words, mate. Andy, what are you saying, mate? What a fluke! <laughs> Follow that, um, Mr. Gray and Martin Tyler. Good afternoon to you, Martin. 25 years of being objective. That was obviously not the right way to do this job, is it, Andy? I quite like that. I mean, that was very Brazilian. I expect the same from you today. A goal of that quality, Tyler, and I want the same reaction out here. I thought I was quite excited when Sylvania did score. I thought you were extremely excited because I was sat beside you. I'd be excited if uh, Derby take the lead today because they haven't done it this season. They've scored nine goals in four games and never been in front. I mean, that, that is extraordinary, isn't it? It is extraordinary and, uh, you know, it would just be our luck to arrive here with two teams who have shown already this season they can quite freely score goals, but can also let them in at the other end. So I arrived here thinking, yep, we might get a few goals here, but there's absolutely no doubt that both coaches both Alan and Jim would be saying to the players, and, and, and Craig has reiterated this with Richard downstairs, well, the thing that they want first and foremost is a clean sheet. <laughs> I hope they don't get it for obvious reasons, for the entertainment value. But I just think when you look at the strengths of these two teams, and we will in a second, you can see why they've scored goals, but you can also see why they've let them in. Right, the teams for you. Derby still without those important influences. Craig Burley, as you know, in our studio. Daryl Powell, Horacio Carbonari. And the dramas of Wednesday night came at some cost. Branco Strupa aggravated a groin problem. And the Rams have to manage without the goal a game man from their first four fixtures. Malcolm Christie's spectacular showing as a substitute made it easy for Jim Smith to plump on a replacement for Strupa. The former Manchester United youngster Danny Higginbotham is brought back at left back. And Stefano Eranio and Rory Delat swap positions today. Well, you look at that, and you put in a back four. I wondered when I arrived after letting in so many goals with Jim Smith, resort to a three at the back that he's used, well, as long as I've known Jim here at Derby. But he he's decided to stick with Eranio, Braxton, Schnur and Higginbotham. And they haven't played a lot together this four. So they are finding out about each other, testing each other. But it's not the back four you have to worry about as well, Martin. What he's got to get today is support from... The lap has got to support them back there. Valakari has got to support Johnson. They, they have all jobs in midfield to protect the back four. Now, if they can do that and do it well, then when you see what he's putting up, you've got Sturridge up here like this, you've got Dion Button and you've got Christie. As Craig Burley says, good movement, good pace, a threat against any team. And with the lap and Johnson backing that up from midfield, you can see why they've scored goals. The question I ask, can they stop them getting at the other end? Alan Kerbishley has decided to recall Carl Tyler, who missed the Southampton match with suspension. Steve Brown, who was red carded on Wednesday night, he dropped to the bench. And Jonathan Johansson's late equaliser in that game gets him the nod over Kevin Lisby. It's the Finns' first start in English football. No room for rotational selection at Charlton. Nine of this 11 have started every game for the club so far this season. And that's going to help them, Martin. And when you have a goalkeeper on the back four, and they play together time and time again, you will start to get a rhythm, you'll start to get to know each other. So Kishishev, Rufus, Tyler and Powell are all experienced. Absolutely no reason why these four can't be together and make themselves tough to play against. In the midfield area with Stuart, Kinsella, Jensen and Robinson. Now that's a talented quartet for me, but I do believe when I look at those four, they are better going that way. All of them are better at attacking and creating chances up the other end, and maybe they are coming back this other way. And that may be again another reason why Charlton have let in one or two goals. But I do think that up front, and Andy Hunt and Jonathan Johansson, Martin, that they have a duo that if they get them playing together and they get them playing often enough with the movement they've got, the ability they've got, I think these two can get goals in the Premiership. Well, the only time Derby have won the Cup, the first final after the Second World War, 
And here are three men who enjoyed that day. Les Fell on the left of Charlton and Reg Harrison, who was in Derby's winning side, who's still coaching youngsters in the area, he was telling me earlier today. And alongside them, Angus Morrison, who missed out on that final, he was with Derby then, but he scored at Wembley eight years later for Preston against West Bromwich Albion. Really, for lovers of the history of the game, some pictures to treasure. So Charlton, they regained their premiership place in emphatic fashion, whereas uh, Derby were in serious danger of being one of the teams being replaced by the promoted clubs, but they wriggled clear of relegation. That scare was largely down to a very poor, poor first half of last season, and they will not want to repeat that this time. Stefano Aranio is the standing skipper with Daryl Powell still sidelined. Some spills and plenty of thrills for Derby County so far, but they badly want a first win of the new campaign. Charlton Athletic know plenty about comebacks themselves. They bounce back to the Premiership, and this time they want to make it a much longer stay. So even this early in the season, Important points are at stake at Pride Park. It's Derby and Charlton. It's live. It's time then for Derby County against Charlton, a Sky Sports production available in widescreen, Dolby surround sound and interactive where there's stats, highlights, full screen camera angles, player cam, and new for this season, Fan Zone, representing Derby Mark Culthred today, and Charlton's Martin Adkiss will be providing their own alternative commentary on the game for Sky Digital viewers on Channel 404. By right, now, let's join our own commentators, the pride of Sky Sports, Andy Gray, and with 25 years or so of subjectivity, Martin Tyler. A win today for either side will catapult the victor into the top half of the table. Charlton 15th, Derby 18th at the moment. And you could look at this as a fixture in the league, Andy, within the league. And I think when you look at what Derby have got coming up, Martin, I think this is a massive game. Craig Burley talked about the start they had last year and how they've struggled to overcome it. Four of the next five away from Pride Park, away at Sunderland, Villa, Liverpool and Spurs. That shows you why this is important for Derby today. Big game to win for them, big game. Derby certainly need to improve their home record. They lost 10 games here in the Premiership last season, plus going out of both cups on their own ground. The clubs from lower divisions, Bolton and Burnley. They do have a, a wonderful pitch, which clearly suits the opposition as well as themselves. On the, awards in the Premiership and uh, most recently been voted the best pitch in professional football. That's quite an accolade. Here's Richard Rufus. Doesn't you see high, buddy? It's <laughs> always brilliant. Hanson was uh, pulled up there long before the ball was guided in by Andy Hunt. Interesting for England followers with a couple of Finns on the pitch. Remember Finland in England's World Cup qualifying group. Jonathan Johansson up front for Charlton. And He's Simo quite Valakari in Derby's midfield. Sorry, Andy. I'm just saying Johansson. Mark, I saw him play a few times up in Glasgow for Rangers, and he does have extremely good pace. Burton, who's just going to operate a little bit behind Malcolm Christie. Christie, who is a real box of tricks, there's not too much of him, but he's certainly got a very big heart, he's had to fight very hard to get where he is today, rejected by several clubs, and then no sooner had he made an impact here at Derby towards the end of last season, he was struck down by this uh, bout of viral meningitis, and this is his first start in the senior side, since he got that out of his system, Jim Smith I'm sure we'll be monitoring his uh, contribution today very closely. Rufus. Oh, the lap switch to midfield. To, uh, need for maybe a little bit more energy and certainly got plenty of drive there. 
And he's nicked the ball back for Derby for the benefit of Dean Sturridge. Burton coming in from the left. And Dean Burton is in. Dean Kiley just got a touch. What a save. Absolutely magnificent save, but a wonderful build-up. When they win the ball, they've got a bit of speed into it. Now, just watch the way he takes his time. He almost points. Do you want it in there? Yes, I do. It's a wonderful, wonderful ball. Kishishev just not knowing what to do. Derby's corner. Met by Carl Tyler. Dion Burton in the clear. But Dean Kiley has been a great acquisition for Charlton. Had a wonderful campaign in the promotion season. Showed what he was made of. And Derby so close, Andy, to get in front for the first It was such time. a wonderful ball from Dean Sturridge, Martin. Absolutely perfection, beautifully weighted, absolutely takes Kishishev out of the game. And having taken the touch, it's, does he opt for power for me, or does he try and place that? He opts to slide it. What a big touch that is early in the game. Fantastic save. I wondered whether Jim would give his top three players that are playing up front Martin any midfield duties when they've lost the ball at the moment early on he seems to have said not you three occupy their back four if you can keep the four of them back there that's fine we'll let the other seven outfield players defend yes Chris Powell knows this place very well two and a half years with Derby County what a surprise really as he was a regular at the time that uh, he was sold to Charlton. Charlton very glad to take an advantage of Jim Smith's decision about that particular player. Here he is. Charlton have played here before in their previous Premiership season. They won 2 0. Andy Hunt got a goal there. And this is uh, Johansson. And turned aside by Mark Paul. Action at both ends inside four minutes. Well, I thought we might give a nil-nil, but already within five minutes, two great chances. That's what Johansson does so well, Mark. He's just pulled on the back of Schnur. It's a beautifully delivered ball, and I tell you what, if that's a yard to the goalkeeper's right, I think he's struggling to get that. Carlton's record signing, Klaus Jensen, takes the corner. Looking to clip it into the man on the near post, Andy Hunt. Well, they've just got to sleep here, Mark. The quick corner's on. Sella. Good stop by Paul Rufus. Well, that's instinct, Martin. He knew nothing about that. I said Derby had gone to sleep, but my goodness, look at the space that Kinsella comes into. Johansson heads, he thinks he scored. But that's a magnificent instinctive save from Mark Poom. It's almost past him. The left hand goes down at instinct, and he gets a little bit of luck. It's a firm hit, and then Paul can't keep it down. <laughs> what a good five minutes. For a long, long time, Richard Rufus couldn't score a goal for Charlton, but he got six last season. Here he is, what he's paid to do, of course, which is uh, defend, trying to uh, head a clean against Burton, who was making a nuisance of himself. Alakari's pass, there's no flag, but there's no chance on the chase for Christie. I think so, they both fancy it, don't you? Yeah. I think they both fancy a win here. Well, as I say, we've got this league within the league, haven't sure. we, in the Premiership? And uh, managers do pick out fixtures to say, well, really, on this day, we've got to have a go at getting the points. If we are lucky enough to pick one or three, maybe up from a top club, Manchester United or Arsenal or the Leeds, well, that's a bonus. And Jim Smith and Alan Kirby actually go back a long way together. The rival managers today, Jim signed Allen as a player for Birmingham more than 20 years ago. This is Danny Higginbotham, just had a taste of it with Manchester United. Derby paid uh, £2 million to bring him here to Pride Park with a chance of regular first-team football. It's always uh, quite a, a psychological step up to go from knowing you're a backup player to proving that you're a first-team regular taken off at Everton after a rather harrowing first half, but faith restored today. Here's the Norwegian Ragstad, and Charlton have completely lost track of Christie. Now, can he tuck it away? He does! Well, the signs were here for goals, 
and we've had to wait less than seven minutes. Malcolm Christie in from the outset today, on target again. Well, there's no excuse for this. You're up against three, it's a straight ball down the middle. He just pulls in behind Ruth. I have to blame the fullback, Martin Kishishev. He knows he's playing against three front men. He steps away from him. He steps away from Christie. He allows it to drift in behind Rufus. One or two players pointing at Rufus and saying, what do you do? I have to pull the finger and point it at the fullback. I think Kishishev made a poor decision. And my goodness, this young lad really is up for it. Derby Lee for the first time this season. Seven minutes into their fifth match. You don't think Jim will take a front man off now and go <laughs> on an extra midfield player or defender, eh? Take them all off. <laughs> Christy. Here's Carl Tyler. Powell. Well, Kishishev, who's the Bulgarian international, Stewart. He's the one who's been exposed by Burton's uh, chance early on and also by Christie's positioning. Played three times against England, he comes at a good stop. Maybe more used to playing uh, on the right side uh, as a wing back rather than as an orthodox right back. He's certainly been positionally deficient. Probably get an offside here against uh, John Robinson. Good run. Good run from left to right. Robinson, that's what I mean about the, the players that we've got in midfield, man. An awful lot of them like going the other way, don't they? They love running forward and creating problems. And Stuart Robinson, Kinsella in particular. They do like to get forward and score goals themselves. He was very unlucky there, Robinson. Only fractionally off. That's right side coming from the left. He loves to make those diagonal breaks. That's one for 50 goals in club football, most of them for Charlton, although he did start with Brighton. In the early 90s, Higginbottom. Now Johansson, Stewart. Alakari, Seth Johnson has played it forward a little too hurriedly, but Charlton in the mood to, to rather give the ball away at the moment. And Alan Kirbishley will want to get some uh, calming influences out there. It's a sloppy ball from Carl Taylor, really. Having won it, so quickly gave it back to Dion Button. Dragstad, who sent that ball through to Christie, has come forward for the free kick. It's too long for him. Played in all three of Norway's games in Euro 2000. League football by Jim Smith when Jim was the manager of Newcastle. Irania. Struggling to get it forward, Charlton here, but persistence paid off. And Peter Jones, we haven't had a chance to mention the, the identity of today's referee, so a lively has been the opening ten minutes. I have to say that I would have let that go. He had a look at it, the referee was going to allow it to go. Graham Stewart had won the ball and he was making tracks. Not that one, that's okay. It's the one that comes up just there, a little bit of afters. You see Graham Stewart about to advance onto a back four there with the ball. Wasn't too pleased to be pulled back. Too high for Graham Hanson. Charlton tried to sign him when they were previously in the Premiership, but Rangers weren't in the mood to do business then. Mark Paul, who was Derby's player of last season, very nearly didn't start this season. He played in a charity match. Derby didn't know about it in his native Estonia in the summer. Got a very bad injury to the eye. You can still see a bit of a, a legacy of it, and also was damaged in the abdomen as well. Coming up for a corner. <laughs> That's the game, but it was really very, very costly to his career. Jim would have been pleased with that news. <laughs> <laughs> He's still fuming. A little ragged at the moment, Charlton, a little bit uh, loose with the possession. Just 
started with that 4 0 walloping of Manchester City. And uh, they have a good account of themselves. Well, they played an hour with only 10 men at Everton, eventually uh, falling a foul of Duncan Ferguson late on and were beaten 3 0. They got three goals themselves but lost at Highbury. And then we're pleased to get a point late on with 10 men again through Johansson is on the ball here. Against the Southampton on Wednesday. Moved by Jim Smith, but Morano has been in midfield. He's the right back at the moment, and the uh, Dilap in front of him, Not working uh, outside there, left to better effect. So it came for the shot from Robinson. Yeah, he could only just poke that in step, almost a pass, the real power behind it. But that was better, and I think if that Charlton have got to try and build up like that man particularly on that far side where they've got Chris Pearl and John Robinson now if they can get ahead of Dean Sturridge and get 2v1 at times against Stefano Aranio that would give them a real chance and the same on this side you know with Kishishev if he gets forward alongside Graham Stewart and they isolate Danny Higginbotham that might be a way through for them wide on either side this is another positional switch because uh, Schnorr who was left back in midweek is now in the centre Steve Elliott's been uh, dropped to the bench today. So it's Bragstad who's on the ball here and Schnorr the German. Two centre backs. As Craig Burley was saying earlier, Jim Smith uh, didn't really want to revert to the three centre halves that he's used for much of the time that Derby had been in the Premiership. Not that maybe Derby could be more progressive building from a, a back four, but that back four, of course has to be solid. When well, you're preaching to the converted where back fours are concerned, mm. Mr. Tally, you know that. This means defenders have got to take responsibility. Mm. Bragstad trying to do that there, but Peter Jones has said that's a free kick to Charlton. Can sell it. And Stewart tends to play a little bit in from the right-hand side of Charlton's midfield. Good work by uh, Johansson. Oh, and Andy Hunt seemed that even a miss kick would take it into the net, but it didn't. Well, Alan Kirbysley is sitting up, and this time, Martin, absolutely staggered that his side half scored a goal. Perm denied him with a magnificent save, and Schnur beaten far too easily for me. That's poor defending, and, well, what can I say? There's not a lot anyone can say about that. Andy Hunt just made a mess of it, Martin. This is on a plate, it's a tap-in, it's 1-1, one, one. no it's not. Incredible miss, absolutely incredible. That was Higginbotham just jumping into Stewart. The uh, consolation at the moment for Alan Kirbyshtein and Keith Peacock there is at least his team, <laughs> their team, do look capable of making opportunities, if they keep making them, surely someone will take one. They'll be happy and brittle at the back so far this season. Well, the evidence of the opening 15 minutes, they're going to have to play an awful lot better on the remaining part of this match defensively. I've seen Charlton will score, but I can't see them going another 75 minutes without creating a chance. by De Lapp, Lucas was quick off the mark, and Seller, Robinson, came a bit quickly at Jonathan Johansson. Well, Robinson's absolutely furious with the referee, Mark, because he played the little ball into Johansson, and he turned Deranio and went to go the other side of him, and Deranio just hauled him back, not allowing him to go for the one-two. Hunt. Chris Powell. In the cellar. Stewart. By Higginbotham. Stop the ball going behind for Charlton's corner. Jensen to take it. Carl Tyler making a run from deep, Rufus has just knocked away from his head, comes back to Kishishev, Kinsella, Jensen, 
Good movement by Robinson. He's the one they're finding hard to track at the moment. That's another corner. Yeah, that left to right little run that he's put in yet again there, but staggering the amount of space he's got there, finding at times, Mark. It's a collective responsibility defending. Ball's ball's out. Bent out, yeah. Mm -hmm. He hasn't uh, been aware of that. He's made aware of that, he has now. Cam for Sky Digital Viewers, Channel 404 is Rory Delap. Derby in a bottom three at the start of play, comprising the only clubs without a Premiership win so far. Southampton and West Ham, the other two, of course. West Ham play in our Monday match against Tottenham tomorrow. That should be. A terrific spectacle as this one is shaping up to be as well. West Ham certainly, in terms of talent at the club, <laughs> misplaced in the current league table, you would think. Seems uh, the lap, Paul Tyler. A good aerial challenge. Robinson's pulled forward and uh, Derby defending well up the pitch so that Pump is adjudged offside. Just as well with a good line there. Higgin Bob. Good movement by. Seth Johnson built to the control wasn't kind of the same standard. Um, you can see he is naturally left footed, and that uh, chance that came his way came on the right side. On uh, the other flank, and I'm sure it would have been the outcome that Andy Hunt would have wanted. Stewart. So great comfort to players who just play for fun up and down the country when they see chances <laughs> miss like that in the Premiership. I've been there. <laughs> Not as often as I have. <laughs> Another Charlton corner. In towards Hunt. That's, uh, more Dion Burton plays a part. That's good defensive drilling at the uh, Derby training ground. That's what's expected of him. It's not always the best defenders. I'm wondering whether there's going to be a chance of a second header by the post. I think almost, Johansson was waiting. Almost Rufus and Kinsella almost getting in each other's way as the ball came over for the first header. They come pretty close together here as they, they both go to meet it at the same time. No one really makes good contact with it, but it's been a pretty good response, Martin, I have to say, from Charles, who's going one down. Confidence hasn't been dented in any shape or form. They've taken the game to Derby. They've been prepared to throw men forward. Johnson. You see how uh, Stewart's in field again. Fischer-Chef uh, hardly uh, confident, really, to go forward into that space from right back. The uh, first ten minutes that he had to endure. Derby haven't quite had as much of the ball in the next ten minutes. See whether they can continue to exploit some uh, positional uncertainty there, and it's uh, well, even that here for the possession. Yeah, I think the last 10 minutes of this match, show you'd find that Charlton, you can into a little bit more of, of certainly dominated possession. They've, they've asked the questions. And I think it's so important if you're a team like Derby County to, to keep it tight, to having gotten the goal early, which they haven't done this season, to, to protect it as much as you can. Not solely that, but protect it whenever you can. Hansen, that must have been tight to being offside. He's uh, dug out across them. Level, of course, is onside, and that may well have been how the assistant saw it. Well, he's been a threat, hasn't he? I mean, he looks well offside there. I mean, he's what? Good yard offside. Gets away with it. But he's been a threat, Jonathan Johansson. Just doesn't quite get enough pull back on the cross. He averaged a goal every three games for Rangers in some 
75 appearances for the club, not always as a starter, of course. That would be uh, pretty respectable at most clubs, whether it is at Rangers, <laughs> score so many. But certainly his talents attracted uh, a premiership club in the shape of Charlton Athletic, and I don't think they were the only ones who were sniffing around at Ibrox. Thought about the quick free kick but then decided to wait to do something maybe a little bit more pre planned. Although, I'll just roll it forward, Kinsella to Jensen. Goes in towards a Carl Tyler, too long for him. I think he was the target. Schnorr's header only partially away for Derby. You can sense the anxiety amongst the home supporters. Christic. But. Kishisler gets a free kick and scratches his head. I think he was always going to get the free kick here. He just gets away from him a little bit there and he just see, just uses his body just to block Kishishev off. That's a poor free kick. Got another one a little bit further forward. The lap on Jensen. That's taken in too much of a hurry. Rather wasted. I think Peter Jones is going to stop there and give Derby a free kick for a push in the back on Burton, but he saw that there was an advantage to be uh, taken by a midfield man arriving, Seth Johnson. I think it was a decent decision, it's exactly what happened. Had the ball been played better to Christie, the Derby fans wouldn't have been complaining, Mark, I'm sure you. I want to see the game going. I think when teams do have an advantage, I think players and coaches in particular want to see the game flow and that be allowed to happen. playing further forward that we've seen from Jim Smith before to have uh, two men wide one through the middle it's Christie the smallest man through the middle Burton working the left Sturridge in familiar territory coming from the right hand side they mix it up of course when their midfielder in possession but certainly when Charlton get the ball they would be expected to defend the wider positions hard work and Sturridge the sort of work that Sturridge goes across now that is expected of him against the player Derby know well in Powell. Jens. Kinsella. In close order. Back to Jens in the day. And he played for Denmark last weekend. Tyler. Robinson back to Carl Tyler again. that skip away and it does just a little bit too long and straight and Derby have had to do without to Harold Powell all season but Franco Strupa's absence today for the first time after scoring in each of their four matches in the Premiership this season he came here with a great reputation Didn't quite live up to it in his uh, first half campaign Belgium international born in Croatia he played against Croatia last week, so it was very strange because he knew the words of the Croatian national anthem back than the Belgian national anthem. Robinson's pass. There was a possibility there for Charlton. It was a bit overhit by John Robinson. It's not always as graceful as that. They chase him by Jensen and Vane. But we've gotten players in. I think Alan Kirkus will be pretty pleased that at various times. The football match in this first half, Robinson and Jensen, Kinsella and Stewart have all got themselves in advanced positions and pretty free. On the other hand, I think Jim would be just a touch concerned about that. Uh, you can see that Derby have had to do the majority of the defending in the first half, and that's basically since the goal mark. And up 
till then, it was pretty even, Stephen. Well, we know a bit about Derby when they're behind mm. from the action this season. How are they going to be? And they've uh, got the lead to try and keep intact and maybe add to here with Christie. The lap was there. Carlton rather smuggling it away. Well, he's a touch unlucky. Malcolm Christie pulled it out the air quite beautifully, but it just it never sat for him and he lost his balance. Just at the crucial moment here. I mean, it's just, he didn't quite get a hold of it, Dean Stoich, which it just helps it on. Again, borderline offside, but look at that, he just wanted, as it dropped, to swing the left foot at it, but he couldn't reach. Just watch here as it drops out the sky, pulls it, now he wants to hit it. He couldn't quite get his foot round it as he was lying on the floor. Six Cup final between these two clubs. The making of the, uh, the pace of the action today. Certainly very different uh, football. The ball burst in that final. <laughs> it's the post war Wembley occasion. Garvey won it 4 1 after extra time. Martin went back and won the Cup the following season. Johnson. Higginbottom. Prepared to take on and leave Klaus Jensen. Waits for Balakari, who's very much a holding midfield player. Yeah, a little bit heavy with his pass, a good option, good break. Aranio had found himself a bit of space right hand side, but he had real trouble dealing with the pass. A little bit too high, too heavy for him. Balakari had four years in Scotland with uh, Motherwell performer but never scored a goal I think maybe <laughs> tells you something about his uh, style more than a hundred games I think I could provide a bit of a screen in that for Derby the team that James put out here be quite happy with that there are enough players on this side that can score goals you want somebody that can stop them going in the other end Balakari can do that as we talked about protecting your back four it's often easy just to be in back fours Mark and say it's their fault but really do you, do, you do need protecting them Christie coming back to then their defensive support here. Jensen to take the free kick. Oh, it looks as though they're going to get runners towards the near post. Stewart's gone there. Behind him. Robinson. Surveying the scene. And they're picking out uh, Johansson rather easily. Amazing amount of space that Charlton players are finding in the attacking field at times. That's when you talk about responsibility, you've got to see a player, you've got to go and pick him up. And your Johansson, again, acres of space on the edge of the 18 yard line, just didn't bring it down well enough. Powell. Reading that off uh, Robinson's chest. It's done with Brain rather than Braun. In the Derby standing skipper. Bragstad. Aranio on the ball again. Delap. and Kylie. Kinsella was always uh, in control. A goalkeeper had come careering out. This is it. Into Kinsella. The peak ball from Charlton in their own half. Yeah. Passing really without a purpose, isn't it? Keeping it not really threatening. Dad would be quite happy to do that. really for the Charlton players, Johansson yeah, that time, but it's been Robinson. Yeah, 
really ruffle the composure of uh, Iranio. This likes to be a thoughtful in possession. Robinson. Kinsella. Stewart has gone wider this time. Really got an understanding with Kishishev. And he's just uh, having a little gesture there with the Bulgarian. And he's still finding his way in the English language. And he's finding it a bit hard to find his way. And Charlton's team calls in this match. Hunt. And it's a twist and turn without a tackle coming in. Jensen. Robinson. Not had Mark Paul diving. He wasn't absolutely sure that it was going wide. Well, he had options with Chris Powell bombing up on the outside as well here. And they really do spread the play here and they could have kept it on again. Look at Powell steaming up outside. It was an option. Short never really troubled the goalkeeper. He's done better, Powell, than Kishi said, Mark, in respect to going forward. have a player who could operate as an orthodox right back on the bench, Steve Brown, the uh, popular one club man. He was available today, although he was sent off rather unfortunately. How the fans would feel, two yellow cards uh, against Southampton on Wednesday. And now for Sky Digital Viewers, Channel 404, here in Ireland, it's Mark Kinsella. So over here he's been Kinsella for a long, long time. Ragsdale. Arania has got some room to uh, move into here. Nice pitcher chef in a good defensive position, we've given him a bit of stick. Got that one absolutely right. Iranio again. Gone infield with Burton and passed him on, the uh, Bulgarian. Sturridge. But Sturridge again. Christie. I'm sure that was the option that Christie was expecting. Again, Dean Sturridge could have kept the play coming towards us here on this near side. His hands up there, he's apologising to Seth Johnston actually, Martin, who again had made, a, he made a lovely run left side, he was open, he could have been played in. Kept it narrow side, and the move broke down. You know, just talk about having pictures of a football pitch. You see, look at Johnston, he wanted the play to keep coming towards us here. Hand goes up again, look at the space in the acres, but they just opened it out. But no real drama, you know, 1-0, there was uh, the one chance I think that Charlton had since the goal, but since then, I mean, Mark Perm has uh, well, been much untroubled, I would have to say, Mark, and although they've had good possession, Charlton, and they've pressed forward and tried to go forward, it's been pretty comfortable for Jim side for the majority. Probably take this going into half-time. Strange feelings for him this season. Well, I know what you're saying, Andy. Uncomfortable is the neutral perspective. <laughs> exactly. I don't think that he looked like a, a man with a comfortable feeling about the world as we saw him there in the stand. But here's Christie. Good to make him relax more. Galat keeps it going for Burton. Courage coming in from the far side, but Pally can wave that one goodbye. Spanish football is underway and all the excitement that goes with it. With it, Las Palmas against Alaves. That's the Sky Sports 1, 6.30. As I mentioned earlier, a Monday night match. And it should be a cracker. Tottenham against West Ham. Richard and Andy in the studio. Alan and Trevor providing the commentary for you. Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports Extra. Strongly recommended. who was developed by uh, Mervyn Day uh, with Alan Kirbishley. Mervyn now the first team coach at Charlton, but he was the manager at Carlisle. And he had a talented drop. He moved on. Kinsella has a go. And it uh, brushed the fingers of Paul. Oh, what a strike. 
I'll tell you, with some venom in this one. Hardly a backswing at all. Look at that, but he gets right through the football. Real power in this. Again, the thing that helps the goalkeeper is straight above him. It's always rising, always going over. Boom, just helps it on his way. Thirty-seven minutes gone. Derby scored after seven minutes. And Charlton have had seven corners. To come here at Pride Park, still you fit. Got it back to the corner taker. Efficiently, Simpson overcooks the cross, and <laughs> Alan Curvis maybe overcooks the language, but you can sympathise. Yeah, having worked it, that's a frustration because Klaus Jensen's got better quality than that, but we all know that. And having put five, six players as targets in there, you do when you work in set pieces. Neat premium is on, good delivery. Some left Bolton, of course, to uh, come into the Premiership. Good Johnson, who's only been out the backup player at Chelsea. Charlton were interested in him as well. There was some talk about a joint deal. It didn't work out that way. Stewart behind Irania. Robinson's cross. He got behind Derby then momentarily. But the lap on the burst. He's up alongside Christie. The ball back with the Valakari. Nathan sensible to Iranio. Now we've got a lot of players forward here. But Valakari. It is Valakari! Oh, he scored for Derby County! The midfield player with no track record in front of goal. And what a time to do it. Half time approaching. They lead 2 0. I'll tell you what, Mark, this is a wonderful move. I hope Richard and the lads have got to take a look at this at half time. This comes all the way from Mark Poom when he caught that cross. They worked the ball beautifully, Derby, from left to right. And then Valakari, well, what a slot. Beautiful place. Such composure. I mean, he ain't scored, as you say. You'd think he'd be thrashing at this, but what a lovely side foot place. Wide of the goalkeeper. And what a smile at the end of it all. Almost a look of disbelief. Jim Smith might be feeling the same way. Now you've got a 2-0 lead. How do you tell the team at half-time not to uh, fall into the trap that opponents of derbies have fallen into? It's a blueprint or two from other matches that they might be able to use from other teams to their advantage. Ball away from Form is a commanding goalkeeper with the crossing. Charlton, if they're going to do better from the wide positions. Well, if it's central and that high and seven or eight yards out, he certainly is not shy coming out to collect it, Mark Poom. Giant of a man. Frustration that Alan Kirby felt at the wasted corner will have been doubled as Derby doubled their lead. his way. Now Brandon Stewart saying the free kick's not been taken from the right place. He's about six inches away from where he should have been. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to grumble, grumble. <laughs> I don't mean you, I mean Brian. <laughs> to gripe about though. I have to say, Charlton haven't done that badly, Mark, in a game. It's been pretty even, Stephen, uh, with regards to chances created. What Derby have done is, is taken two of those. The referee allows the game to go on. Charlton have got two forward. And Hansen on the ball, Stewart trying to make a third man. You're not going to make one of your famous remarks about Derby need another goal. Well... <laughs> I bet you Jim Smith feels that. 
think, was it? At Coventry in the Cup where Charlton came back from 2-0 down. We had a famous win last season. They've got bags of spirit, bags of togetherness. It hasn't quite manifested itself in a team performance defensively in that respect. And Sturridge threatens them again here. Balakari. Hosted in by Iranio. Burton. Burton again. Quick clearance from Kylie. Two against two. Now look how wide the game is stretched across the pitch at the moment, Mark. 60, 70 yards between back fours here. Wide open. I think Derby players seem to have the set. Now, Mark, they think they feel that they can get another one, and if they could, they nick another before half time. My goodness, that would be a mountain for Charlton to climb. Fill up, Schnorr. Fisher Chef. Is a useful outlet from right back. Christie making a run across the face of the penalty area. And a trademark twist and turn. Before he was uh, caught by Carl Tyler, who, whether he plays or trains, does it exactly the same way, never falls out. He's just out skilled here, it's as simple as that, nothing wrong with that. I'm not so sure if he meant that he'd drop on that side. Not so sure there's an awful lot of contact either. It's a situation where they wouldn't ma mind having Branko Stripper on the pitch now. He's already shown us this season the sort of range, how deadly he can be. So now it's up to one of the others to take responsibility. Johnson is the left footer. The lap is there as well. Sharp actually put a man back on the post. They tried to uh, outwit the Derby options then. Yeah, they do. They get Graham Stewart, I think, back on that post. And in all honesty, Mark, if that's on target, the size of Graham, he's not going to get that. He's not going to get up the head that. A strange one for Jim. Jim Smith going in at half time, 2 0 up at home, big game. Just wonder will he, even this early, think of tinkering with anything or will he feel so happy with the way things have gone that uh, he'll stick with it? Three up top and not take a backward step at all. That's more what Valakari's about, yeah. closing down, giving it and getting it. This goal, terrific bonus for Derby. Seconds away from the half-time whistle with a 2-0 lead intact. Charlton got the free kick, Kishishev takes it. The starting point was well out. It's great that, you know, you know you've got a goalkeeper that big. You don't need to drop back in on top of him, you hold your line and he can come out and just pop things up. There's a bit more thought from the, the deliverer of the football there to test the goalkeeper, Martin. Here's Sturridge. Oh, <laughs> Came off Stewart, I don't think that was an intentional back pass, but uh, Ali was taking no chances. Peter Jones has a look at his watch. Might not have been the uh, top of the fixture list when he looked at the Premiership games to uh, assess this weekend, but uh, it's been a, a fine example of what uh, can be shown, even by teams that are in the lower half of the table. Charlton with a good share of the ball, but conceding a goal early and late in the half. Malcolm Christie got the first, Simo Valakari the second. Charlton had, uh, as I say, a lot of possession in between, but now they have a lot to do. 2-0 Derby at the break. I mean, we remind ourselves, wherever they have been this season, there has been goals. 2-0 Derby County lead. Craig Burley's thoughts on that when we come back to Pride Park, where County have their noses in front.
from Sky Sports. As Martin mentioned a little earlier, the Spanish league underway now. Las Palmas play Alves tonight at 6.30. It's immediately after we've finished here at Pride Park on Sky Sports 1. Tomorrow night, the Monday Night Football takes us to White Hart Lane for Spurs and West Ham. That's a 7 o'clock start. And the last word on all the weekend's football from Andy. And on Tuesday night, with more football, 7.30 on Sky Sports 2 and interactive for Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra. We've got Huddersfield, who just can't seem to get a win at home so far this season, against Wimbledon, who, of course, thumped five past Sheffield Wednesday at the weekend. That's Tuesday night. Craig Burley, our guest here this afternoon. Well, we're just discussing it, Craig. Are Derby full value for the 2-0 win? The two, the, I believe. Well, I hope it's a 2 0 win. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been pretty even the first half, and uh, after the first five or ten minutes, it was a little bit scary. You know, Mark Prim has made a couple of great saves, and you know we've managed to get a goal in front, and it's been pretty even up to then. And, and they were great saves as well, weren't they, from Prim? The second, it, it, absolutely instinctive. Fantastic saves, and uh, that one's pretty easy from big lad tips it over. But uh, first five minutes of the game, it really looked as if it could have been a goal or two down, and. You know, I think uh, to go in at half time 2 0, we're going to be delighted with that. This is the better one, isn't it? Yeah, Johansson comes in late. Instinctive save, Andy said in commentary, and it was. And Charlton a bit unfortunate not to, to score with the rebound there. Uh, so Johansson comes in late, great header, not much more he can do. Heads it down, put makes his body there, and then we get, we get the rub of the green when he puts it over the bar. And literally two minutes later, Derby County were in front. Christie, of course, got two the other night. And for the first time this season, in front. That's important psychologically, I would have thought, for Derby. It is, and it'll be important getting in at half-time. Uh, straight ball, Malcolm's played off the shoulder of uh, the defender. Uh, great touch, great touch. I mean, he's still, he's still not played many games this season, so he's a little bit rusty. Composed himself, left foot not his strongest, but in the back of the net. You'd have taken 1-0 at half-time, yep. wouldn't you? Yep. So, real bonus the second then from Valakari. Well, it was, because it was touch and go after we scored, and... Uh, Pumi makes a good catch here. And he he's mentioned the catch, yeah. He's yeah, he's commanded his box very well the first half and rolls it out to Seth. And we're patient, we don't just go forward and lump it up, we try and build up. Irani has been on all day for the switch and uh, we managed to switch it here to him. As I say, a bit of patience, pass the ball. I'm counting, that's four. Something which we've not really been doing and, uh, you know, some good play, some good one-twos and good movement. Uh, Valakari, a little one-two, onto his left foot, not his strongest, doesn't score many goals, but you've got to give him credit there, that was a great finish. Nine touches and nobody in red got near it. No, as I say, if we do more of that, we've got the players to do it. If we, if we have a wee bit more confidence in myself and play a bit more football, uh, I think we can we can cause them problems, but on the other hand, you know, they, they've looked a bit lively going forward as well. Yeah, you can't relax, can you? Here's another example of that Andy Hunt with the opportunity. Again, carved out on this right yeah, hand side. Yeah, Stefan Snow's got a bit tight to him here. Great skill from uh, Johansson, I think it is. Fantastic skill, nutmeg. We thought this was a certain goal. I mean, he's got his, he's got his on a bit of a muddle there. He's gone with his wrong foot, actually, hasn't he? His favourite, but wrong foot there. Yeah, he's got caught between you know what one he's going to go with, I think, and uh, we were very fortunate at that point not to go behind or, or, or equalise whatever it was at the time. As I say, we had a couple of chances like that in the first half, Charlton, and you know, a little bit fortunate. You just never know with Derby, do you? Do you, do you do you get the feeling there's more goals in this yet, either either for well, your own team or for something us? for Charlton? Well, I hope not, but uh, the first 20 minutes we didn't defend particularly well, but for the last 20 minutes, 25 minutes of the first half, we didn't concede much space in, in our box and uh, we, we looked pretty comfortable. So 2-0 at half-time at Pride Park. Derby County in front, can they stay there? Can they hang on? We'll find out next. We've your way for cup football this coming Thursday night. We're with Chelsea for their first round first leg tie against San Galan. 7.30 for Sky Digital viewers on Sky Sports Extra, half past seven. See Chelsea in the UEFA Cup this week. Unusual, Craig, for Derby to be in front this season. Hasn't happened yet. Now, is, mentally, how strong have they got to be in order to stay there? A uh, clean sheet will do the confidence of our players. You know, the world will be good and the... Uh... You know, obviously the first one of the season if we can keep a clean sheet and some important games to come up so keep it tight at the back hopefully not give them the same sort of chances as in the first half because I don't think they'll be so unfortunate twice and you know keep the gaffers blood, blood pressure down and, and they're sitting here so I'm, I'm confident you know I just hope the lads can go about it the same way as they did in the first half. It's time then for the second half of Derby County against Charlton. Sky Sports production available in widescreen, Dolby surround sound and interactive the usual array there 
stats, highlights, full screen camera angles, player cam, and new for this season, of course, fan zone, Derby's Mark Cuthred and Charlton's Martin Adkins providing the alternative commentary today. For us here on Sky Sports 1, it's Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Two down, Charlton make two changes, Richard. On comes Kevin Lisby, who started the four previous Premiership games this season and done pretty well in them, it must be said. And Paul Konchewski, who replaces uh, the rather hapless Kishi Chef. It's Lisby for John Robinson. But, uh, Lisby is very much a player who likes to operate from the right-hand side, which is where he's lining up for this second half. We'll have a quick look as soon as it starts, Martin, to see whether they're actually going to go like for like against Derby. Certainly, Konchevsky's just dropped into the right back area where Kishishev was, and it looks like uh, Johansson's going to play from the left with Hunt central, Lisby from the right. And if they do that, then it's a like for like formation. from Kevin Lisby's performances in the previous mm. game has been a goal. His uh, direct running and uh, penetrating style of play is uh, as though it's suited for this level. This is Gross. Going to no man's land, or at least no Charlton man's land, although Kinsella covered some ground to get there. Despite the panels uh, for handball from the home supporters, Peter Jones lets the game go on. Frank Stad clears. No need for thrills from uh, Derby now. Safe, sensible defending, economical play maybe. And looking to uh, hit Charlton on the break as they try to chase this difficult position. One thing we should say, Andy, about the weather, it's uh, very steamy. Obviously not so apparent to you uh, watching on a cloudy afternoon, but it's very warm here in the East Midlands. If Dominic Cork's bowling at the nearby <laughs> cricket ground, it'll be swinging all over the place. The Derby should have just been relegated, haven't they, from the, uh, the championship yesterday? They'll be hoping in these parts of sports lovers that the football team does rather better over the next few months. <laughs> Sturridge. Bristol. Tyler's stern tackle. Important early minutes at the start of the second half. If the Derby can get another one. And I might feel taken all the stress out of the second half. Burton putting plenty of sting into the shot. Well, it's been bright. Malcolm Christie all day now. He's now the subject of our player cam on Sky Digital. And it uh, might be worth a little look at that because I tell you, he's been bright, he's been alive, his feet very, very quick. So there's money in the bank now for him as we get to the second half. Short of fitness, this would be great. I think Jim would love to keep him on as long as possible. But it may be that the young lad does tire. You mentioned Christie's movement, and uh, I must say, watching at home uh, during the Monday nights when uh, Alan's doing the commentary, I enjoy the, the player cam to get an extra um, close up view of uh, the talents of individual players in the Premiership. Jensen. Nicely done by Stewart. Derby. Uh, Packers didn't uh, appreciate their uh, team standing off, but then Stewart, in his uh, urgency to get into a telling position for Charlton, gives away the free kick. They're going to get a bit of their own medicine, Derby, you feel, second half. Uh, every game this season, they've had to have a right go second half, almost throw caution to the wind and go at teams, take a chance. You feel that that's surely what Charlton have got to do, even this early. They need to get a goal back to get back in the game, they need to force Derby back and test this, what has been a brittle defence so far this season. Sturridge. Can't have let him go a long way, Dean Sturridge, and he's quite entitled to have a little uh, dab at goal at the end of it. There were other options to his left. Powell. Get to Johansson away. Johansson is 
Andy pointed out on the left-hand side now at the start of this second half as Alan Kerbishley has changed the personnel. That's the touch area with a pass. Balakari looking to release Rory Delap. Certainly struck his hand. Obviously the referee saw it. It was very close. I couldn't see it as intentional. Sturridge. Give and go with Burton. Sturridge back to Burton again. Kinsella going in. It's Stuart Kinsella and Jensen as a three-man midfield. I'll tell you what, Martin, Carl Tyler is a very fortunate lad. I, I can only imagine Dion Button caught him, he didn't like it, and he just had a wildest swing with his left boot at Button. But you can imagine him, fortunately, made absolutely no contact. And this is a player just back today from a, a suspension already this season. But this is where Derby are getting maybe a bit more joy now with the Lisby and Johansson. Supporting Hunt, there's more room in midfield for the Derby members of that particular part of the pitch, like the lap. A little bit for Kinsella there, they're running past him. A lot of unlucky with the corner as well there, I thought the ball came back off the lap just as Rufus blocked it. And the linesman decided to give a corner. I think he's having a word with both here. Now this is purely because of what went on, now just watch it closely here, there's a tackle there, the ball breaks here, he has a little hook there, now watch as it goes away, a little nudge and then there's a wild flash with a left foot. Johnson's corner. It's uh, Higginbotham. You can see as he approached the ball, he was trying to get his stride right so he could keep the shot down. Yeah, he was looking to shape it, he had play this with his right, he's instinct rather than really drill this, look he's trying to place it, trying for perfection, just didn't keep it down. It's a pretty open football match we have now and I think that's the shape of things to come second half, I don't think Derby are, uh, are equipped to close a game down, to keep possession, to frustrate Charlton, so I think we're going to find there'll be attack one end, attack the next, it just might be a shootout here with whoever gets the next goal. Well, Said it before at 2 now. Might be the case again. One more for Derby, you feel sure it would be all over. But if Charlton could pinch the next goal in this match, one or two wobbles, one or two jitters from Derby players. It's been of pinching the ball for Charlton. This is not just in Derby games where we've seen revivals this season. Manchester United lost a 2 0 lead, Liverpool lost a 3 0 lead, and then lost a 2 0 lead yesterday to Manchester City only to find a winning goal. Well, we saw Chelsea lose a two-goal lead oh. 15 minutes ago last midweek. Well, Kuczewski uh, really was uh, brought on as a, a left-back, Charlton's youngest ever player in the senior side as a 16-year-old. He's got the nod over Steve Brown to play at right-back, Kishishev drawn at half time. Right, the crowd calling for King Clance to respond to their chanting. There he does. Not fit at the start of the season. He's back into the frame, had a reserve game against Charlton ten days ago at the baseball ground. Two of the combatants today played in that one. Charlton were 2-0 to the good that day, they're 2-0 to the bad at this stage where it really matters. It'll be interesting to see how long Jim Smith gives King Clads. He feels sure he's going to give him another part of this game to further his fitness in. He is the type of player who can take the ball for a little walk, Martin, and give Derby a breather. Lisby. So this is a goal kick. Andy Hogg, the assistant.
good win today for Derby. Just lift them out of the bottom three. It would take them halfway up the table. Stewart. Jensen. He was very honest then, he kept going. Could have easily uh, just felt the contact and gone down and uh, got the free kick and maybe uh, avoided a bit of the pain that he's feeling at the moment. Yeah, he was very honest twice, Iranio, the first culprit, and Dean Sturridge the second, he managed to hurdle both. This one here, he gets away, well, almost got free, but Dean Sturridge does catch him there. Jensen to take the free kick himself. That's well, not the first time uh, that uh, Bottom's sheer physical presence has helped Derby. Uh, it's the movement, as Andy was uh, saying in the first half, they're troubled those at the back for Derby by movement. They actually got good bulk and size when the ball's being tossed in and be a temptation, of course, for Charlton to do that in these circumstances. I think they've suffered a little with Johansson, Martin. I know what uh, Alan's tried to do to go light for light with systems in the, since the second half, but I think taking Johansson away from the central area and putting him on this left side, he's had little effect in the game for me so far. It might be worthwhile just even pushing him and leave Lisby on the right-hand side to get on with it. And you know Chris Powell's going to bomb down the left anyway, but shove. Johansson infield and get him in contact a bit more with Andy Hunt. They're a little bit apart the two of them at the moment. But what we haven't seen so much in the second half, and it might be down to attitude as much as the shape of the game, is Iranio getting on the ball as the outlet, and Johansson's operating in his part of the pitch, maybe with that in mind. Malakari, the scorer of Derby's second goal. Sturridge. Iranios on the move. Sturridge <laughs> is unpredictable. More you than 200 see. games for Derby. And I still think <laughs> <laughs> he's as likely to uh, do that as burst the back of the net. Well, you mentioned Dominic Cork. There was a few Derby supporters stood up with their arms out as if they were signalling a wave there. <laughs> you can see what he tried to do. He shaped yeah. with the outside and the right foot to bend at the far corner. Passing by Derby here. Johnson. But this is the lap. Reflection as he was closed down. Yeah, decent movement of the football. That's Derby's one of the better pieces of play. It's only a minor touch, but it's enough to deflect it wide. But they moved the ball forward. Quite comfortable, no great pace. And Really, Charlton didn't do an awful lot to disrupt that passage of play. Lisbeth. Jensen. Johansson to his left. Only Jensen in the centre. That might be enough, it is. 2-1. Well, what a spot from Jonathan Johansson, Mark. I can't tell you what a great ball this was in. He only has an option, it's a wonderful break. I mean, much like Derby's second goal, they break from their own goal, the whole length of the pitch. Now, just watch this. He's only got one option here. He's only got one player in here. But what a spot that is. What a ball that was across the face of the six-yard box. Full marks to Jensen. He played it and kept going, and he got his reward. A simple tap-in that really does put Charlton back in this football match. So no clean sheet for Derby. Now they'll be worried whether it will be five games and no win. Still the last third of the game to go. And from further out, Jensen got far better contact than Andy Hunt did in the first half. Oh. 
We've seen how quickly uh, Derby and uh, unattended really Derby had moved the ball forward to uh, get the corner. And then Charlton did exactly the same. It's going to be a booking here for Rufus. No, they're not happy. The yellow card comes out. I mean, got a hold here. There's a pill from Pesky, there's a pill from Rufus. I think he's unlucky, Mark. I know you picked the points out of that to, to book one and both are pulling each other's shirts. I mean, that's why he's so upset, Richard Rufus. You now can't afford another missed time tackle. Well, I mentioned he'd get a part of the game. He's going to get half an hour. Going to get half an hour in place of Dean Sturridge. Jim Smith was saying uh, earlier today how pleased he has been with the support for Derby. It's not a full house today, but he, the ones that come in these circumstances when the team's just, just a, maybe a little bit short in terms of results early season, they're the real, the true fans, and they're, they're backing. The lap! What a chance. Well, he gets in. His fair share of chances, Rory Delap. He's normally quite an accomplished finisher, and it's a wonderful head back across the face of the goal. Can't score from where he is, but he rises majestically. It's a beautiful header. Straight across from Buckland. Wow, that's not a great header back. Not, nothing difficult about that. Just didn't get enough contact on it. That goes in, and that does burst the Charlton bubble. As it is, it could increase here. Johansson, 2-2. The 2-0 lead at Pride Park. Oh, that was quite staggering. I told you the next goal might shape this game. Now who would you bet winning this match? Quite incredible that this ball could travel the length that has Martin and there's a goal on the end of it. They don't deal with it. It's a lovely flick by Hunt. Goalkeeper thinks he's done his part. Doesn't get the luck he thinks he deserves. Jonathan Johansson thinks, well, I've deserved this little bit of luck for my creation of the first goal and it ends up a simple tap-in, but the header on from Hunt, the big moment. Brackstack doesn't follow Johansson, his pace was too much. Half an hour to go. Two goals in under three minutes for Charlton Athletic. And clads it. Well, and the, in between, Rory de Lapp has been peppering away with the headers. I mean, all I can say is it's a wonderful, wonderful cross. That's a more difficult header, but he gets up, he is over it, he's not on the stretch, he must, in that case, you've got to hit the target, you've got to test the goalkeeper. And that's what he does. And it, they keep allowing him in there free like that, and the lap will punish them. There's Johansson, of course, who equalised in different circumstances at the Valley. Late on, when Charlton were a man down against Southampton on Wednesday, that earned him his place in the starting 11 today. And he's justified that selection. Mike's gone up against Christie. He feared a bit for Richard Rufus if he hadn't heard the whistle then, and that's a steamy contest between those two on a sweaty afternoon. Well, who'd be a manager? What Jim must be thinking. 2-0 up, looking fairly comfortable at half-time, and then within three minutes, a three-minute spell in the second half, you know, well... Stewart. Lisbon. That's the collect. Free kick to Charlton. More pressure on Derby at the back. A rash challenge that mark not going anywhere. No need for the tackle to go in. Seth Johnson just a little bit of frustration there, and now they've got to defend free kick from a dangerous, dangerous area. Uh, player cam uh, uh, the spotlight goes to Klaus Jensen. Sky Digital Viewers Channel 404. Uh, whichever angle you want to watch it from this is a, a super contest what a season for comeback so far quite staggering a 
Derby now in the more familiar territory having to <laughs> dig in. King Cladzik. He's one of five forward for Jim Smith's team here. Christie. King Cladzik. Twist to turn, a shimmy. Just Go give it. Try to make give sure it. no shot. Give it. He's got Seth Johnson staring at him from five yards away, Mark. The lap. Johnson gets it now. Lesby, Darby have uh, got a player down. And it's uh, Higginbotham out of position too. And I suppose Darby can't complain about the ethics of the game after a certain incident here against Middlesbrough. That was quick because I tell you what, Graham Stewart launched into that tackle on Higginbotham Martin. It really was a cruncher. I'm not sure from a long way away whether it was two-footed or what, but he certainly lunges into this tackle. No, oh, it's fairly high, but and you can see where he catches him right on the shin there. Is it there? Just a little follow through. It's always uh, difficult to do that when the ball's running away from you, as it was from Stewart. Jim Cladze getting down to the sort of artistry that we saw so many times in his days with Manchester City. There's a little give and go, isn't it? He's off and running and he's got such quick feet. Scared to stick a leg out here because you know he could go over at any moment, but having been shut out there. You can see Johnson just looking at him. Well, he is the type of player at 2 2. When you give him the football in the last third, anything can happen. Shortly, meanwhile, Charlton do have the corner. Taken by Jensen. Horn, who was all the domination reflecting Derby's position in the game earlier. And they wanted to was catch this then. Chest height, that's the thing. There wasn't enough height in it for him to come and meet it, so he, he just decides to take it at chest height. And I have to say, he's unlucky, Richard. He took a little chance there. Any slight nick on the ball would have taken it in. Too much on it. Quarter mark. It'll be more finely balanced. Both teams will feel that they can win it. Both teams will fear that they might lose it. An arousing second half from Charlton Athletic. Alan Kirbishley and his management staff. Same team that keep big up Mervyn Day that were there. They're in the Premiership last time. They're back older. They hope wiser in the ways of football at this level. I think they're back better because the team. Oh, Any fan will tell you there's nothing sweeter than seeing a side, uh, your side win an away match, and uh, if that can be uh, accomplished from. A perilous position of being 2 0 down. It's an unforgettable day. Of course, it was a situation Manchester City fans were in yesterday at Anfield, and they ended up, well, uh, I think pretty jubilant about the display, but despondent about the result. Same so might have gone for Joe Royal as well, Judge. <laughs> and some of his after match comments. Well, the yeah, well, handball, oh, and the uh, referee gets some help from the assistant who's there to do that. We sometimes wonder whether what instructions assistants get about dealing with incidents that referees don't spot. Working in harmony then, free kick for Derby County. The lap. Burton back with the lap again. And, uh, and he shakes his head alongside me. No, I'm sure we had it descending and much as anything because Rory Delap having yes. won the header. They but just also trots Charlton's it. inability to track yeah. Rory Delap in. Unbelievable into. at times. Players that just run off people and get free. Hunt. This is uh, Johansson trying to 
cut across Schnorr, but he's strong on his left side, and that's where he'd like to make the tackle, and did. 20 minutes to go. No, you have to see, you cannot, I mean, I just can't see this doing it 2-2, too, too, Martin. with the corner, Tyler trying to get a flick to it. What a chance for anyone who flew in and made the flick. Picked in by Powell. Oh, oh, jumping with this time, and this time, of course, he flicked on for Johansson's equaliser. Just backed off, Darby. The lap. Higginbottom. Only coming out quickly. Sometimes goalkeepers can miscalculate at that, but change direction in the nick of time. Can sell it. Okay. that was trying to cushion that down. That would be a costly mistake because here's Hunt around the back. Breaked away by Schnorr, luckily for Derby it went to Iranio. Burton. And Balakari rather, and here he is again. From Kladzik. Christie. He's prepared to try the trick in the last third of the field. Catch out a defender with uh, an impish piece of play. Seen too much of him since his goal. And well, Rufus has seen plenty of him, and the two just tangling there. The referee needs to offer some uh, cooling advice. Johnson. Stewart. Watch out and sweep forward here. Hunt. For Stewart. Jens has just pulled away deep for a, a very long cross. That's Graham Stewart couldn't come up with. Uh, had good support as well. Johansson Hunt had gotten himself back round and into the box, and Jensen as well, as you said. We had a few options in there, Graham Stewart, had he been able to deliver. Yes, he needs a shout there, yeah. needs a shout. Johansson! No Charlton complaints at all that the referee didn't do from the looked like he was seeing that as a possible penalty incident. Balakari. King Kladzi. That's Higginbottom. Really get out and uh, tidy up. He's a Republic of Ireland international these days. He did graduate from that FA national school at Lillyshaw. Uh, I guess he was being... Uh, Trained the coach to be a future England goalkeeper. And at the same time as uh, Graham Stewart. King Classic. Christie. Able to turn and shoot. Well, he's the one who looks most likely, Mark. If Garby are going to get the goal, he's the one that's movement is really troubled both Tyler and Rufus at various times in this match and he's really unlucky see what he tries to do, just doesn't get his right foot round this ball and get it bending and arcing in towards that far post you wouldn't have a small wager on uh, Rory to lap <laughs> stealing in <laughs> well, he's to steal it, the points think. they have their own uh, views on how this game is going to finish and 
get something from uh, the away game at Pride Park. Maybe we'll travel back on the M1 tonight. Never an easy journey on a Sunday evening, as we uh, <laughs> know only too well. We'll be very pleased if there's a point, or maybe three, to take with them, having been 2 0 down coming to the last 15 minutes. And with King Clancy on the pitch, we thought we'd uh, offer you the chance to follow him through our player camp. Sky Digital Viewers only, of course, Channel 404. After Manchester City went to Ajax for a spell. Didn't work out for a club or player in that respect. And after a period of loan, he's now signed on a permanent deal with Derby. From Chesky. Lisbeth. A very good track record of producing players through their own youth set up, Charlton. Mike Lisbeth and from Chesky. Stewart. And Schnorr taking no chances. Lack of communication, Mark. I mean, that's a ball that's drifted harmlessly into Poon's hands and he wants it. Much like the header that uh, Brackstad made a few minutes ago, you need a little bit of communication between goalkeeper and your defenders. They've got to sleep Derby again. Jump short corner, Lisby. Couldn't find the head of Rufus. But thankfully, uh, we deal with human beings and not robots. Uh, confidence can be a fragile commodity. Derby had. Uh, Bags of it as they went in 2-0 up at half-time. Now they're looking uh, far from commanding. But another goal could uh, change that, the mental state as well as the scoreline. Kim Cladsey. Come back to the Georgian again. Can Burton get his foot to it? Ooh. Well, he wondered about who was making contact with what then as Richard Rufus went across. I think he did a decent job, Rufus, that was danger written all over that movement there. Lovely little slide drill pass here from Georgie King Cladsey. Watch Button come into the picture across and Rufus just does enough. Just does enough. Doesn't make any contact with the ball, but there's enough. Gets him sound around Button. Just leans on him. And Kylie does the rest. Well, the rest included kicking the ball out for the attention of a teammate. And what, are you Paul to say? what are you insisting here? I'm just wondering where Derby are going to throw the ball. <laughs> and I think Dean Burton's <laughs> getting some advice <laughs> from uh, the crowd behind him. There's nothing that Peter Jones can do within the letter of the law here. He was uh, discussing it. Remember, he was the referee when Carno and Overmars came up with that uh, incident against Sheffield United in the FA Cup that led to a game being replayed. Now it happens all the time up and down the country, we can understand a bit of added significance here today. <laughs> and uh, Normal service was in. Middlesbrough men watching will be going, yes, but. Yes, through the road. And we've got 12 minutes to go. But Christy won't catch that one. Burton, the lap. Christy in the middle. Pass has just taken him a little bit wide, and uh, it would have been a magnificent spot if he played him straight into goal. Malakari. Now Irania. Malakari wants it again. It's, uh, tracking back. He's got to be careful in his own penalty area. Tidy work from Balakari. The lap. Comes back to Rory. The lap again. And, uh, one or two chance players were thinking about offside. They've got a, an attacker, Johansson, in a defensive position. But he, in that 
position, had to play the ball, he tucked it away from Arania, but Derby had a corner. Braxter, a big Norwegian, is in there, right on the edge of the goal area. Out comes Kylie, and uh, he's slow to get to his feet. He's repositioned now, King Kladze. But Iranio, play on, says Peter Jones, to Bedlam around Pride Park. You have to see Marfas out for Pinion's here, penalty. I think he's outgone and he's tricked him. Christie, out comes the goalkeeper. Christie didn't pull out. Iranio still down. going to book Malcolm Christie, Mark. I don't think he, oh, he's, he's booked at Anio as well, as he certainly showed no, him the card. He's the card to Christie. Is it to Christie? Yeah. Aranio had his say. Well, it's it's uh, 28,000 voices around Pride Park. Well, Johansson goes to sleep now. He brings the ball back here. Now, that's a penalty. I don't care what anyone says. He's caught him. End of story for me. The referee's no more than... 10 yards away from this, you watch, he brings the ball back inside, the leg comes round, he hooks her at you. I mean, how more blatant do you want it to be before you can give it, and how close do you want to be? I think he's got that wrong, the referee. Mark Kinsella is the relieved captain, the aggrieved captain is Stefano Iranio, who of course complained that there was a wrong penalty given against him in the 3-3 draw with Middlesbrough. Alan Kerbishley, I think, is now looking more for a holding operation. Steve Brown comes on, signals are up, three fingers, three at the back. Well, it might be, they're just moving. Kopchewski just ahead, I think, yeah, definitely three at the back, then they've moved at five in midfield, two up top. So for, so for the first time in the match, really, someone's taking a back of step after 81 minutes. Burton, that's a great chase. A very difficult ball to reach and keep in play. He's played well today, Dion Burton, in all different aspects of the game. Worked unselfishly for the team. Defended. Covered the ground up front. Is he capable of winning goal? The other number nine has uh, been uh, taken off. Andy Hunt. Chesky much happier on the left foot. And certainly the substitution has suggested that the initiative here is with Derby County. Can Kladzik. Not wanting to have a crack when he made space to do it. Same this time. Aranio. Oh, he's unlucky. Flash it across the face. I'm not sure whether he tried to do that, but that's what King Clancy can do, Mark. He can create for himself, and then if it closes all down, he can do this. He can create for others. And it's just a little bit on the stretch for Aranio. I think he's trying to flash it across goal. It would have been a tight angle to attempt a shot from. It just gets away from him when it skips off the ground. That's quite control it. Seven minutes to go. It's edge of the seat stuff for Derby County and Charlton. And uh, for the neutral viewer as well. <laughs> Ooh, that was uh, clumsy, shall we say, the defence of Kevin Lisbeth. Malakari. And has come out with uh, Christie. The lap. And then the ambition Derby really need. King Gladsy. The right for the reverse for Iranio. Johnson. Well, he looped it to the far post. No one uh, coming in. 
to round it all off for Derby and maybe round off a victory. Well, it won't surprise you, Mark, there's a lack of bodies in here. When this ball is stood up at the back post, it's a, it's a great ball in. And that's all we can do is knock it back across goal, Seth Johnson. And he had no support whatsoever. Spanish football to come, 6.30, Sky Sports 1, Las Palmas and Alaves. And Tottenham against West Ham from the FA Carling Premiership tomorrow at 7. Sky Sports 1, Sky Sports Extra. Someone needs a call. A look round at Kylie. Powell. And here's Lisby. Getting into space behind Bragstad. Cross comes uh, Schnoor. Charlton have a corner. Of course, if you're going to beat Derby, it seems you've got to score in the very last minute. <laughs> Stop them having a comeback. Well, what they've done with that change, Alan Kirby, the mark is he's, what he's decided to do is because King Clancy's influence was rising and getting greater by the minute, he's actually put his skipper Mark Kinsella on to just man mark him for say, forget anything else in the game but stop him playing. Jensen's corner. Form again in keeping with the stumbly second half from Cardi County. They uh, do know what it takes to get late goals. Burton. Johnson. The, uh, well, he's not the biggest, is he? But he made that his header. Burton had believed a bit more. He might have got to it first. Easy to say. Players uh, feeling the pace at this late stage of an end-to-end -end game. And they in no hurry to get the ball back to the team he coaches. In some. Jensen. Finished 90 minutes for the first time since joining Charlton. Johansson. Kinsella. Powell waiting. And plenty of space on the Charlton left. It comes out to Jensen. Oh, how close was that? Oh my goodness. I think his first touch lets him down. <laughs> A lovely ball in from Chris Pearl, acres and acres of space, Arani has gone walk about here. The goalkeeper really has difficulty dealing with that, and you can see it just got away from him, he had to go back away from goal. As the ball reaches him, doesn't quite get it under control, and how close is he? Well, he's nowhere near at the end of the day, but what a chance for him, what a chance with less than three minutes to go. Adam Murray who's adopted the uh, aggressive haircut policy here at Pride Park. Comes on for Iranio, maybe shaking his head at the penalty decision that wasn't given in his favour. Maybe hooked by the manager because he was uh, absent without leave a moment or two ago defensively. Oh, oh let him well. go, let him go. Goodness, they're pleading with an FLE. Oh, Graham Stewart's furious. Absolutely furious. That's fine, let it go, then bring it back in the end book. Yellow card for Schnorr, but a bit of breathing space for Derby County. Time to get organised, which they certainly weren't. Schnorr was tugging away. Murray. 90 seconds plus stoppage time left. Kinkladze, have got the options on that far side derby, Kinkladze can uh, switch the play or the lap as well, he's trying to do it with uh, too much delay. They had all closed all, all over, Martin will take it, lap tried to get it, the ball was from Kinkladze, had he taken a little look up. Kinkladze, it was a shirt pull there by Kinsella. Now 
after a portion for Schnorr. Quite staggering that. What, a minute ago, captain's perks. A minute ago, a Derby player gets picked for pulling the shirt back. And so that has been let off the hook a couple of times in the second half, one way and another. But Derby have a free kick. This could yet be the decisive moment of the match. And Clancy takes it. But cleared by Brown. Two minutes of stoppage time. And it's a weak one. By Murray. Kinsella has a look to see what sort of support can he expect. He's got that Lisby. Two to stop him. So you can see again that he's not so comfortable on his left side. So we are in stoppage time. Derby. As the Richard said at the start of our afternoon, the comeback kings. They've well, been on the wrong end of a comeback today. Where does life, there's hope. And, uh, Dramatic conclusions involving Derby County this season. And, uh, only had a few games, have been plentiful. Oh, they're just a little bit off the pace, tired legs there, but no one really up. Edge of the 18-yard box for that header that just dropped outside of it. Second minute of stoppage time. Lap has got a, a lengthy throw. Reinstad has come up. Burton's a target as well. Oh, you've got to shove most of them in there. I can't believe there's four Derby players, six Derby players outside the box at the moment. Only three in the penalty area. The three you see in your screen. Well, Cooper just a bit unsure. Johnson. And, uh, that's from Carl Tyler. Uh, straight up in the air. Oh, the goalkeeper <laughs> nerves the jangling in that uh, Charlton defence at the moment. And now maybe for Derby followers as well as Lisby pursues. We can run down the clock here, of course. Oh, and when Balakari scored to make it 2 0. Close to half time. You're not going to see the thought it was all over. No, no. <laughs> it's looking good for Jim Smith and Derby County. We talked about the two Finnish players at the start of the game. And at the finish, Finland have had a big part here to play. It's Alan Kirbish's team with the comeback today at Derby. Two goals inside three minutes in the second half with a strong Scandinavian flavour. Klaus Jensen from uh, Johansson's Cross got the first. The new recruit from Rangers got the second. Charlton are not known as big spenders. They're a careful club who would be a good example to the nearby governors at the Dome back in Greenwich. But they spent over £7 million on their two goal scorers and they've got a dividend from that. They've got a point at Pride Park after Christie and Balakari had put Derby, it seemed, in a prominent position. 2-2. Still to come, a huge day of sports. Here on one at half past six, it's Spanish football. Last power must take on Alaves. At nine, it's the NFL. Seattle Seahawks face the current Super Bowl champions, St. Louis Rams. Over on two at nine, it's the final of the Men's US Open Tennis Championships. Over on three now, there's live National League cricket. Nottinghamshire take on Glamorgan. And for Sky Digital viewers, there's interactive coverage available also. At 8.30 tonight, goals on Sunday. All the weekend's goals. And at 10, day four of the Bell Canadian Open. A terrific array of live sport from Sky Sports. Craig Burley's thoughts on that when we come back. Did say at half-time, 2 nils, never won. It wasn't. Great point for Charlton. 2-2 two -two here. The reaction is next.
The eighth time this season a team has come from two goals down to get at least a share of the points. 25 goals now in Derby County's five games. Did mention that at the start of the show. Charlton two down at half time, full value for their point. Jensen and Johansson, their goal scorers in the second half. Christie and Valakar for Valakari for Derby County in the first half. And it ebbed and flowed. Never really too much between them, although Derby will feel they should have had a penalty late on. Most would agree with them. Claire Tomlinson is with our man of the match. Well, the Carling man of the match is Charlton scorer Jonathan Johansson. Jonathan, the second time in a week you've got the equaliser. Yeah, it feels great. Uh, I think we, we played actually better in the first half, I think, than in the second half, and we were 2 0 down. So we, we decided in the half time just to keep playing on. We put the three forwards up. To, to match their, their system and uh, it worked, so it was good. Did you feel you were unlucky to be two down? Uh, you had some good chances yourself in the first couple of minutes. I think the first half both, both defences uh, played a little bit shaky and uh, gave away too many chances. I think we had two or three good chances, they had two or three good chances, so it could have been <coughs> either way, but, but uh, you know, it's good to, to get a point from this game. And you also, of course, had a hand in the first goal, linking up with Klaus Jensen. Yeah, it was a good run by Klaus. It was a, a corner or something, I think, and we, we bro broke, broke off and, uh, and we, we surprised him with pace, I think. What did uh, Alan Kerbersley say to you at half-time, Jonathan? Well, nothing nice. Uh, he was quite disappointed at uh, how we defended, and, uh, <coughs> but he was happy with the amount of chances we created and just told us to keep, keep on going and, and uh, it would be all right. Towards the end, did you think you could go on and nick it? Uh, well, me and myself, I was so tired in the end. So, uh, but uh, I felt there were still goals in us, yeah. Okay, well, you are the Carling man of the match. Thank you. Well done. Thanks, Claire. Malcolm, having come from behind against three other teams this season, how does it feel with the boots on the other foot? Not nice at all. I mean, we went two up first half, maybe a bit fort, you know, fortuitely, but, you know, we were absolutely gutted now. We obviously, like you say, we obviously know what it feels like. It's devastating. I mean, you're tuning up with an hour gone. What went wrong? I don't know. I think we just put the foot off the, the pedal I think I mean they scored straight from one of our corners so it was a breakaway goal you know we're not going to be happy about it the gaff is going to be you know not happy in, in the changing rooms and you know we just got to put it right you know when we go in front we should we should really stay in front and it's you know it's not really well what happens is the when they get the second as well does the confidence start to roll you're hanging on really well we were yeah I mean it's always good to go two goals up and you expect to win the game from there but you know, looking at it now, we're probably, you know, we're pleased with, you know, coming away with a point. You know, although we did have chances, to, you know, either team could have gone on and won it. But we've got to look there and we've got to be happy with a point, I think. Do you think you should have had a penalty when Stefan Aranio went down? Well, I was quite close to the incident and it did look as though there was contact made. You know, but the referee didn't give it, you know, and we've got to get on with it. Lastly, a word about yourself. Back from a dreadful disease this summer. How pleased are you the way things are going? I'm delighted at the moment. Obviously, I've only had lots sort of one and a bit games and, you know, to score three goals I've got to be delighted with. You know, and I've just got to keep improving, you know, working hard at training and we'll see how far I can go. Yeah, thanks. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. Cheers. So what do we say at half-time, Craig? Derby in front, 2-0, but be careful. Yep. And that's the way it turned out, wasn't it? Well, Malcolm said the manager won't be happy. I think that's an understatement. He'll be raging in there. We've given two bad goals away. I mean, if we lose goals to good play and then they're passing it about and you know they create something, you got to hold your hands up. But one of our corners, they break up the field and score, and the second goal is a long punt over the back and they're in behind. And you know, suddenly it's two-two and we're on the rocks. We look as if we could lose the game. Very Such your mental strength uh, and, and how much does that uh, apply in situations like that? You hadn't been in front this season. Was it psychologically perhaps something in the minds of the players? I don't think so. I just think we're, we've not quite performed well as a unit at the back this season and uh, we always looked in the first 20 minutes especially as if we could concede. And we came out in the second half hoping to go in from the first half and you know we've looked, we've looked edgy again and for a 20 minute spell in the second half we were all over the place. Well for the neutrals amongst us it's great entertainment following Derby County. 25 goals in five games this season. You've come back time and again so far. Today, as Jeff was saying, in front for all that, chances galore in the opening ten minutes. You may have found yourself one or two down again. Yeah, I mean, great, great for the viewers to see the chances, but not, not great for us, especially when you, the amount of goals we've conceded. Great ball from Dean Sturridge, good touch from Dean Button, but credit to the goalkeeper there, good save. But then Charlton go down the other end, and you know they're almost, they're almost going in front, and that's how really the first 10, 15 minutes went. If it wasn't for Mark Poom, you know we could be two down in the first 10 minutes.
Second save, the better of the two in that opening ten minutes comes from the corner. Yeah, Johansson coming in late, instinctive, as Andy said, and you know, fortunate that uh, he doesn't put that in in the rebound. And... But a straight ball up here for us, Christy off the shoulder of the defender, good touch, good composure, young lad, 1-0. It's a terrific finish. From a defensive point of view, it's a terrible goal to give away, isn't it? It's well, not so easy, isn't it? Well, Alan Kerber they won't be happy, but uh, you know, he's, he's good at that, Malcolm, playing off the shoulders of defenders. Johansson here, great bit of skill, through Stephen Snow's legs. Really, how this wasn't a goal, you know, we don't know, and uh, you know, we're very, very fortunate there. Andy Hunt just got to sell in a little bit of a muddle. Still, they kept coming, though. Yeah, as I say, this was a period in the first half, first 10, 15 minutes. Good, good, good height for Pumi there, and uh, you know, pretty comfortable. This is a passage of play we had leading up to a second goal. Valakari, good little one-two. Nice on his left foot, not his strongest, but didn't snatch at it, just side footed it in the corner. You know, two 0 up, going into half time. You know, that was a great. That was rate. a lovely move from back to front for Derby County. Nine passes involved there without Charlie touching it. Yeah, I mean, we, we showed a bit of composure there and we got the rewards for it, but we were disappointed with this. Our corner kick. We've got four people defending, nobody on the edge of the box. We've let them turn. You've got three round in there as he comes. Yeah, uh, well, in. I mean, they're running at us. We're, we're still in control at this moment in time. Good ball in. Goal. I mean, Credit where it's due. It's a terrific break, isn't it? It was a great break, but uh, when somebody's controlling the ball on the edge of your, on the edge of their box and turn, and then you've got to be asking questions and give a foul away there, do anything, to stop the play. We never did that. Straight ball up here, watching the ball and. A little bit fortunate, Pune gets a hand to it, breaks back to Johansson, but uh, he was a danger all day with Yeah, his he'll pace. argue with his service, that, and he's um... Yeah, he was, you know, he was a danger all day with his pace, and uh, we knew about that. And, you know, as I say, we get caught watching the ball, it was a straight ball, there was nothing clever about it, and, you know, that's the kind of goals we've been giving away. Yeah, Rory's a bit unlucky there. Kinklazi put in a few balls when he came in, a few nice balls, and uh, we were a little bit unfortunate. This is the incident I think we're all going to be talking about. Yeah, we'll see about. this again in a moment from another angle. Well, well that's a penalty. Where's the ref look? As Andy the said, ten yards away. For goodness sake. The ref's ten yards away. I mean, how close does he need to be? Does he need to be half a yard away to see that? I mean, you know, you've got to take into account, yes, people are diving in the game, but if that's not a penalty then, you know, I don't think we're going to see any more penalties, because that was as blatant as it come. Half chance here for Rani on, on his wrong foot, but a uh, bit of frustration creeping in and in the end, you know, I think the gaffer will be bitterly disappointed. Alan Kerbish, they will be absolutely delighted. Carling Premiership, top to bottom. Um, fairly familiar sight really with Manchester United up there, but full marks to Leicester City. What a start they've had, 11 points from five. Newcastle off the top this weekend, Liverpool, Arsenal hanging about, Leeds there in sixth. Everton up into seventh. Spurs play tomorrow night, of course, on the Monday night football against West Ham. Coventry stay ninth. Then it's Chelsea in tenth place after that goal is draw at St James's Park. Manchester City, Middlesbrough, Charlton there up into thirteenth with their point today. Changing places with Villa. Bradford City fifteenth. Derby sixteenth. Ipswich seventeenth. Uh, Sunderland, Southampton, and West Ham making up the bottom three. But Derby up there into sixteenth place with their point. Can you bear to see it again, the penalty? Do you want another look, just in case there's any doubt in your mind? Chris is going to give it again. <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> this was a penalty. I mean, he's close. He can't, he can't say he's not in a good position. I mean, that's clear. He's just completely took his legs away. Arani was a good bit of skill. He's sold him the dummy. He's took the legs, and, you know, we don't get one just rewards because, you know, at the end of the day, it was a penalty. I don't know if he was booked for what the referee felt was a dive or what he said when he got up. But I, you I can presume understand he was... what he said when he got up, can't you? Yeah, well, I presume he was booked for what the referee interpreted as a dive, but uh, you can understand why managers and players get upset, and the FA are wondering why, why managers are getting upset with referees, and I think that's one of the reasons, yeah. Mm. OK, we'll get um, reactions from the dressing rooms when we come back. Uh, Jim Smith's here, and Alan Kerbish, please. And that's next on A Super Sunday. <laughs> Alan Kerbish is ready to talk to us. He's with Claire Tomlinson. Alan, at 2-0 down, did you think you could come back like that? Well, I did, not because of um, particularly what's happened to Derby in previous games, but we was playing OK. But two dreadful, dreadful pieces of defending. Um, the fellow got inside our full back and in between the centre arms, and they should have scored, and then they scored the one they did get. And, you know, we had a chance to get back in it. And I just felt I had to make some changes at half-time. I had to be really offensive, and I just felt if we could get enough of, of the ball, then we could be dangerous and, you know, and thankfully we got back in it. You must have taken some confidence from the first half chances that you did have, but how much does it worry you that you didn't take those? 
Well, that is a problem, but I think the first proper call for me is uh, the defensive stuff. You know, if, you, if, you, if we're letting goals in like that or being threatened after a couple of minutes, then, uh, you know, that's the problem. And I think that uh, anyone would say to you, you've got to sort that end out first and then hopefully the other end comes. But in the games we've played so far, you know, we have created a lot of chances. And uh, I think one or two of them will be disappointed they haven't put them away. But I'm going to be thinking, I'm going to be concentrating on the other stuff. You know, I've got to, I've got to work hard. We've got to work hard to stop, stop letting goals in. How can you turn good performances into victories, though, Alan? By defending better, because I think the footballers I've got at, at the club and, and the way we can play and the way we have played in the five games, uh, we are going to create chances. But you know, it's no good if we're going to let goals in like we did, and um, you know, we've got to work hard on that. And uh, was your heart in your mouth when Kinsella went in on Iranio in the box? Well, I was actually coming down. You know, I did have a few trips up and down, but uh, they told me it was a penalty. And uh, you know, I think perhaps for the first time. Uh, so far this season, we've had a bit of luck. You know, uh, we had a few refereeing decisions go against us. You know, the sending offs and whatever, and uh, perhaps that's a little bit of luck. And I think we deserved it. You know, I think overall, the chances uh, created, especially the second half, uh, we deserve to get back in that game. Jonathan Johansson was man of the match. Got the equaliser for you twice in a week now. How pleased have you been with his performances? Well, it's been, he's, he's had a problem. He, he injured himself uh, the first week before we started, and uh, slight hamstring strain. And in all fairness. Up until last week, he'd only had 90 minutes of football in bits and pieces, and I couldn't start him. And, uh, but he slowly got there, and obviously that's his first start today, and um, he's done fantastic for us. And I think, you know, with young Kevin coming on as well, I think it, it gave us a chance to get out, because I knew he was going to come under pressure. But, uh, you know, we're happy with Jonathan, and he was happy to come and sign for us, and we hope that we can uh, be successful. Thanks very much, Alan. Thank you. Full marks, what a lovely change as well. The manager prepared to say, hey, yeah, they tell me it was a penalty. Um, we saw it was, but uh, he's conceded the point too. It's no consolation to us now. No, of course it's not, but it's nice, isn't it, when a manager's prepared to say that? Well, it is, not coming out hiding behind, you know. Didn't see, see it, couldn't see it. Yeah, my sure view wasn't good. It was a penalty, and uh, I've never seen Iranio so, so fired up after an incident, and you know, that shows it was. Booked for dissent, incidentally, um, Iranio. Your second goal, we mentioned when we saw the story of the game, the, the, um, the little edit there didn't perhaps do justice to it. Look at this, from the keeper. Yeah, as I say. And encouragingly, some lovely football play. Well, I mean, I think we've got to have a bit more confidence when we play, especially at home. I know it's difficult and uh, in front of your home crowd. But if we, and we've got the players capable of keeping the ball and, you know, our game's not to shell it forward. And we've kept it here, we've passed it well, we've took our time. As you see, we've got four players up, so we're positive. You know, we're patient. Uh, see more players up. We we'll try to play a little one-twos, looking for little gaps. A little bit of luck there, just misses the tackle. Slots it in. I mean, that was a perfect play for us. If, you know, if we had a bit more confidence, did it a bit more often, you know, I think we would we'd improve even more. But uh, unfortunately, we're, we're conceding too many at the back. That made it too. You also do have one or two injured, including yourself. Yeah. So how much of a difference would those players make when they're back? Well, um, I would like to think it would make a difference. You know, obviously, there's I think four or five senior first team players out, and for a club this size, it's too many. We haven't got the squad. We haven't got the mm. financial capabilities to go in, as far as I know spend another five, six million people. Mm. So the gaffer's working with what he's got at the moment. And you no, know, the lads have had four draws, which is it's not the end of the world, but we're not quite quite putting the icing on the cake. How often have we heard Andy say 2-0 can be a deceptive lead, a dangerous lead? Half time, Derby County led by two goals to nil, but Charlton hit back. And from your point of view, not just disappointing they scored, the manner in which they scored must have been irritating. Yeah, I mean he turns on the edge of the box. Four players we've got back there. That's, that's a disappointment. Why not stop him here? That would be the plan, wouldn't Well, it? I mean push on the edge of the box and, and give a foul away if you have to. I mean gives you time to get back, stops the play. Big credit to Charlton. Absolutely. I mean Johansson's quick, he's got in behind, he's pulled it back, and Jensen's getting forward from midfield all day. Got his just rewards with a goal and uh, really rocked his back. They actually that. worked it very, very well, didn't they? They did, and we were chasing back and chasing back and uh, you know, as I say, great bit of play from the two of them and combined for the next And is goal. that the point when players start to wonder, when they have led, all of a sudden it's 2-1? Is that when confidence is fragile? I think confidence is low, especially playing at home and, you know, giving so many goals away. And 2-0, the boys would have been confident half-time and they'd have been stressing to them, go out, come on, let's keep a clean sheet, let's give us a bit of confidence to go on from here, we might get another goal or two. And we have the worst possible start in the second half and all of a sudden you can see the lads, you know, the heads dropping a little bit and, you know, not long after they get their second goal. Could they have ridden, if they had ridden, it might have been, been a different outcome? I think so, because I think after the little spell they had when they got the two goals, we really pushed back on. And, you know, we looked then as if we could score, but they were always dangerous in the break. But we, we certainly controlled the game, I think, the last 20 minutes. And as I say, unlucky once or twice, but mm. when you're giving goals away like that, it's very difficult and to win. And the second games. really was a give. Again, credit to Charlton. 
um, in a very lively spell for them, made it two apiece, but look, this is Route 1 stuff, isn't Yeah, it's it? a big point up the middle, Johansson takes a chance, Pumi comes out, good touch, ball breaks back to him, in the back of net, it's simple, it doesn't get any more simple than that, but from the defending point of view, I think, you know, they'll be looking at that next week and, you know, asking a few questions, uh, to give away goals like that at this sort of level. Mm. You know, that's far too easy. I said right at the start of the show, you know, when we see the league table, so many at this stage say, oh, it doesn't matter. But it does when you're down there, doesn't it? It does, because we could have went to sort of mid-table today, mm. which after, you know, one or two disappointments recently, you know, coming behind all the time, you know, that could have suddenly been looking a lot more respectable for us. Mm. And saying that, we're in four points. It's not the end of the world, but it's not quite the start we were looking for. Jim Smith is with Claire Tomlinson. Jim, we talked about Derby being the comeback kings. Have you been teaching people lessons? Well, we aren't teaching our team very well because we're defending like amateurs, you know. We've rather fortunate, to be fair, to be 2-0 up. Um, we should have scored in about, what, first three minutes, I don't really know. They should have had two in the next five minutes. And uh, and then we got, uh, uh, you know, Malcolm put the goal ball in and uh, to come off 2-0 at half-time, you know, you think, well, this is it. And then, we, I mean, the two goals that we gave away were just amateur, really, an absolute amateur. And... Uh, Disappointing. Uh, the penalty, claim, claim, Iranio, what did you make of it? Well, I, I just, I, I mean, the referee, Mr Jones, if he, I mean, he was only, what, five yards from there. If he can't see that as a, as a, as a penalty, he shouldn't be refereeing. <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, I can't, you can't go and say too much, you know. He, uh, he's had a good game up to then, but, I mean... It would have, I mean, it might have been a little bit fortunate for us, but it was a penalty, I mean, and, and, it, and it was a bit of lovely stuff from uh, Iranio and, and King Clancy, and he's got in, he's come back into the six-yard box to either score or find somebody, and he's pulled down. Um, King Clancy came on as a sub and produced his usual amount of magic. Does that mean you should start with him, or is he a super sub for you? Oh, he's not going to be a super sub, but, I mean, he, he's, he takes a little bit longer than most to uh, get match fit, and, uh, you know, because... Uh, he doesn't exactly run around a lot to get match fit in, uh, in the game, but his ability is, is, is tremendous. And, um, you know, we, we just know that in the next fortnight, uh, he'll, you know, he'll be a, he'll be a, a natural player. I think uh, it'd be fair to say when we get Burley and Powell back in midfield, it'd be easier to put him in, uh, in with them experience, as you, because if you saw today, the lack of experience cost us, really. On the plus side, though, Simo Valakari got his first goal. In about ten years, I think. <laughs> Uh, but he was a good football. We played good football all the way down, and uh, he, he slid it in with his uh, his battle on his left foot. But he, and I thought he did very well actually today, Simon Balakari. Is it a question now of lifting the players? Are they very disappointed in the dressing room now? Yeah, I mean, not not as disappointed as I am. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, we'd weather the storm. As I said earlier, we we're a bit fortunate to to be two 0 up at half time. Saying that, they never give us any problem, and, and then suddenly they break out from a corner. We're all in for a corner. We let them break out and score, and then a kick right down the middle. Yeah, I mean, you can't. That, it's rubbish. That. And I mean, uh, and then we went on again. Then, which is a bit too late. Well, it might not have been. We might have been the real comeback kings. So, uh, a lot of hard work on the tra on the training ground this week, Jim. Yeah, I mean, we, we'll look at the reserves tomorrow, Carbonari plays tomorrow, and uh, Elliot and Riggett, and we might have to change the personnel at the back because it's, they're letting too many goals in. Thanks, Jim. Cheers, Claire. Honest, open, direct, Jim Smith asked for an opinion, he offered it, leave him alone. And what's he saying about you two, Powell and uh, Burley, two doggers, and then he can put King yeah, Clancy in? I think that's what he's saying, he's obviously not seen us play for a while, is he? <laughs> oh, obviously, it's quite hard to, to integrate him back into the team because, as he says, he's not much fit. He is great on the ball and he gives us different options, but uh, we're a bit thin, thin in the middle at the moment. And uh, you know, we want people in there at the moment who are going to work hard and try and get us, you know, a few points. Mm. You need a win, don't you? We do, we do. We've not been beat at home, which is nice after losing 11 games last season. But we really need to win. And we've got a tough couple of games coming up. Sun going away, which is never easy. And then Leeds at home, we're flying, so we're getting players back fit, which is the main thing. And hopefully, there'll be another three or four people to pick from. The next How far away are the senior men that Jim was talking about, yourself included? Well, probably a couple of days away from training, but haven't played for five or six weeks. So, mm. Daryl? Yeah, again, similar, similar to me. You know, he's probably fit in about ten days. And uh, Carbonari coming back from a hernia. I'm glad he just had a hernia. So we have got players to come back. It's I mean, true, Bowie Reed has gone for a while. Is that right? Yeah, he, he looks as if he might be going for a hernia operation and scored four goals in his first four games. Mm. And he's, He's a big lump up front and, you know, he's, he's scored goals, he's great in free kicks. 
it's always a danger when he gets a free kick outside the box. And that's disappointing for us and for him. And uh, But we've got you know, some provisions up front, good pace with Christie, Sturridge and Burton. They were struggling a bit when you came here last year and, and got it going. Um, did you enjoy that spell? I enjoyed it when we got the point against Newcastle here and we were safe. It was really, you know, when I came down I was really hoping that we would put some wins together and, you know, take a bit of pressure off. But uh, I enjoyed the football, but, I, you know, obviously it's not nice when a relegation dog fight and, mm. you know, it was a struggle. And I was hoping this season it's not going to be the same sort of struggle. I still feel we're good enough to climb the table, but, you know, there's no point talking about it. We need to get fit, I need to get fit, and we need to start winning some games. We spoke about Charlton. Uh, during the first hour uh, of the show, you felt they were better equipped to survive in the Premiership this time around. Uh, do you stand by that? Yeah, I still think they're better equipped to survive, but I uh, still think they look as if they could lose some goals as well. Again, they've got good pace up front with, with Johansson, and Graham Stewart and some experienced boys in the midfield. I think he's a good boy, a uh, good boy for Bolton, uh, Jensen. I think he's a clever player. But it's tough and they need to win games as well and, and Alan Cumbersley will know that. And we're all in the same boat but uh, it's important for clubs like us to have a good run before Christmas otherwise you know, life just becomes... You different. look at those clubs who you feel might just be hanging about with you if, if it is indeed going to be a bit of a struggle. Uh, is this one of those games that you think, well, you know, we should be beating them, we've got to take three points off them? Yeah, I mean I think so but uh, when you're playing at home you're hoping to take three every, every game. Obviously when like, say Man United come you're hoping for the three but it's a difficult game. Mm. Today we felt we had the beating of them the same as we did with Middlesbrough, but uh, I've got to say, we played actually quite well against Middlesbrough and we're three down. We didn't play so well here today and we're two nil up at half time, so it swings in roundabouts. Mm. But we're disappointed in the manner of the performance, especially at the back, first 20 minutes, second half. Thanks for joining us. Enjoyed it, Craig. Thanks. Very much indeed. Football still to come tonight from Spain. Um, absolutely delighted that the Spanish football is back. Huddersfield play Wimbledon Tuesday night. Huddersfield desperate for a win at home this season. Three straight defeats, I think it is now. Five goals for Wimbledon at Sheffield Wednesday at the weekend. They meet Tuesday, 7.30, Sky Sports 2. And we're with Chelsea in Europe this coming Thursday. Sky Digital viewers can watch it on Sky Sports Extra. 7.30 start, it's Chelsea against St. Gallen. First round, first leg, UEFA Cup tie. Here, Derby County and Charlton produce goals. No surprise there when Derby County are about. See you tomorrow night. A blue shoots up through the stony ground. There's no room, no space to rent in this town. You thought you found a friend to take you out of this place. Someone you can lend a hand in return for grace. So beautiful.